is a gentleman who won nine of 16 games that he coached here and I guess except for three games Bud Wilkinson the former head man at the University of Oklahoma has seen every one of these Texas Oklahoma games in some capacity or another since 1947 Bud, you tell me what it means what it feels like to come out of that tunnel in this old cotton bowl well it's a little bit different than any other kind of rivalry Keith when you walk down that ramp and onto the field you're just engulfed by the emotion from both sides as you've already mentioned the stadium is split half and half so every snap of the ball half the people here are very happy and the noise the volume it just gets to you now we've had all kinds of noise about uh, people spying on each other in particular Daryl Royal making charges that Oklahoma has been spying on him one I want to get right down and cut through all of the, the pregame noise here and ask you what can you achieve by scouting somebody's pregame preparation well first Keith you uh, know if there are any special plays that they're going to put into the game I don't know how many of the people saw last week's game uh, UCLA against Ohio State but the fourth down play from punt formation that UCLA ran to keep possession of the ball is one of those plays that if you had watched them practice you'd be ready for more importantly you look at the sets they're going to use on defense you can practice against them and that helps you tremendously right. Well, it's an extension, too, I suppose, of the emotion that really grips this particular event. And right now, let's join Bill Fleming for the introduction of the players. Ladies and gentlemen, here are the players to be introduced today. Defensive players from both teams. First of all, for the Longhorns of Texas. At left end, number 59 from Fort Worth, Texas, Rick Burleson. At left tackle, number 77 from Austin, Texas, Brad Shearer. Right tackle, number 92 from Tyler, Texas, Ernest Lee. At right end, number 31 from League City, Texas, Steve Stratty. Linebacker, 55 from Amarillo, Captain Rick Fenlaw. Linebacker, number 96 from Winfield, Louisiana, Lionel Johnson. Linebacker, number 13 from Las Cruces, New Mexico, Captain Bill Hamilton. Rover, number 49 from Colorado Springs, Colorado, Mike Partinger. Halfback, number 24 from Fort Worth, Texas, Raymond Claiborne. Halfback, number 11 from Divine, Texas, Paul Jeff. Safety man, number 28 from 40, Texas, Steve Collier. Center, number 62 from Port Arthur, Texas, Captain Billy Gordon. And the head coach of the Longhorns, Harold Wild. And now here are the defensive starters for the University of Oklahoma. At left end, number 89 from Galveston, Texas, Mike Phillips. At left tackle, number 76 from Greenville, Texas, Richard Murray. Nose guard, number 62 from Miami, Florida, Reggie Kinlaw. Right tackle, number 74 from Houston, Texas, Phil Tabor. Right end, number 88 from Brownfield, Texas, Dwayne Backus. Linebacker, number 85 from Odessa, Texas, Daryl Hunt. Linebacker, number 40 from Hobart, Oklahoma, Bill Dalkey. Cornerback, number 16 from Palo Valley, Cal uh, Oklahoma, Terry Peters. At cornerback, number 17 from Murfreesboro, Tennessee, Jerry Anderson. Strong safety, number 7 from Hearst, Texas, Scott Hill. Free safety, number 19 from Burke Burnett, Texas, Zach Henderson. The captain and strong side tackle, number 79 from Ada, Oklahoma, Mike Vaughn. And the head coach of the Sooners, Barry Switzer. It's too bad Red here didn't take care of the inside of this thing like he took care of the outside. <laughs> well, Red's going to turn white when he finds out he has to pay me about $400 to rebuild his engine. $400. A Fram oil filter costs about five bucks. Now, if he took care of his engine right, changed the oil and filter like he was supposed to, chances are he wouldn't be paying me all that money. I mean, he could be splurging on a, a new bed. <laughs> Look, it's your money. Now, you pay me now, or you can pay me later. Bank AmeriCard, today's way to pay, presents... Birthday presents, perfume essence. Galoshes for the rain. Tennis rackets, winter jackets. New window pane. Eyeshadow, vacations. A hammock for the yard. Airline tickets, okay with you. With Bank AmeriCard. Over sweeters, fancy eaters. Skateboards and engine free. Hotel, 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 car rent, golfing tea. Bank AmeriCard. Bank AmeriCard. Today's way to pay. 
Cotton Bowl seats 72,032. I think there are more people here in the stadium than that. But this is the 31st consecutive time the game has been sold out for the Horns and the Sooners. The President of the United States is to conduct the toss of the coin with the respective coaches. But since we are at the peak of the political campaign and due to the equal time requirements of the Federal Communications Commission, we are not allowed to cover it. So let's join Dave Diles to update some scores. A budding upset, number four ranked Georgia in the third period, now trailing Mississippi by a score of 18 to 14. Out west, Colorado three to nothing early in the game against fifth ranked Nebraska on a 50 yard field goal. Missouri ranked number nine is losing to Kansas State at the half, 21 to 14. And get this, Kansas State has an all freshman backfield in there. Michigan number one ranked leading Michigan State in the final period by a score of 42 to 10. Let's take a look at scores in the East, commencing with the Ivy League. Princeton in the fourth period, leading Columbia by a score of 9 to 3. This game started 20 minutes late because of heavy storms in the East, and the weather has really played the Dickens with the football games all over. Cornell and Harvard are now in the fourth period, and Cornell, without a victory this season, leading Harvard 9 to 3. One final in the Ivy League, Yale has defeated Dartmouth by a score of 18 to 14. Pennsylvania, in the final moments, has taken the lead over Brown. The score is 7 to 6. Penn State found an offense today, guess where, in the defense. Getting a guy who's been a safety man, Mike Gumini scored four touchdowns. Penn State leading Army, 38-16, fourth period. Tulane and Syracuse, a final now. Syracuse won it in the last few moments on a field goal, three to nothing. West Virginia in a breather over Temple, fourth period. The Mountaineers lead 42 to nothing. Richmond and Villanova in the fourth period. Richmond, the Southern Conference, leading 24 to seven. Holy Cross, which has lost eight in a row, may make it nine. Colgate leading the Crusaders 10 to six, fourth period. Connecticut and Rutgers. Rutgers has won 11 in a row, now 12. Rutgers 38 nothing over Connecticut. In the Yankee Conference, Massachusetts, the winner over Boston University, easily 33 to six. And Maine playing New Hampshire this afternoon. And that's now a final. Maine has defeated New Hampshire by a score of 10 to nothing. In the Southeastern Conference, Fran Kersey's Kentucky Wildcats trailing Mississippi State's Maroons at the half, 14 to nothing. Alabama, which has an easier schedule now, leading Southern Mississippi, 21 nothing in the third period. Tennessee, where in battle, Bill Battles trying to hold on to his job. Uh, is leading Georgia Tech. That score is 35-7 to seven in the fourth period. This is Dave Diles in New York. Now let's rejoin Keith Jackson at the Cotton Bowl. All right, David, thank you very much. Here in the Cotton Bowl, you're about to hear one of the most famous spirit songs in the world. It's called The Eyes of Texas.
the Oklahoma Sooners are downfield like a red wave to bury him all the way back inside the Texas five-yard line. So now let's set the Texas backfield for you at quarterback Mike Todaro. At left halfback, it'll be number 26, Johnny Lamb Jones, though I don't know if he's going to start for sure. Johnny Ham Jones, number 25, and of course the big guy, number 20, Earl Campbell. Ivy Suber may very well get the call for Texas, and he is in there, number 22. Johnny Lamb Jones had a bruised back from last week's game against Rice. Adaro turns, gives to Campbell. He's got two yards to the seven-yard line. As he started right, cut back in against the grain, except there wasn't much grain to cut against. Oklahoma was just there waiting to jump on top of him. Texas is the offensive line for the Texas Longhorns. Alfred Jackson, number two, is the wide receiver. Over on the left side, it's George James, number 79, at tackle. The guard is Rick Ingram, number 73. At center for the Texas Longhorns, it's Billy Gordon. On the right side, it is Charles Wilcox, number 66. And you've got a mix-up and a fumble in the backfield. As Cadaro holds on to the football for Texas, but he loses a couple of yards back to about the five-yard line as Mike Phillips, number 89, the defensive end, is in to get him. On the right side of tackle for Texas is number 74, and Alfred Jackson, of course, we gave to you. The tight end is Joe Samford. Here's the mix-up in the backfield of the ball that almost got away. Just a very simple mishandle of the snap from center by Cadero, but he did make a very good recovery. Didn't lose too much yardage on the play. When you run a triple reverse fake on the kickoff, you have to be pinned back if it doesn't work, which is what put Texas in this very bad field position. Russ Exverden standing deep in the end zone, hits it out for Texas, gets it to turnover, and he knocks it all away back to the 35-yard line where it's fielded by Jerry Anderson, a defensive back for the Oklahoma Sooners, getting to the sidelines, but all the way back to the Texas 41-yard line. So it was a 60-yard punt by Russell X Living, but it was a 24-yard return by Jerry Anderson, and Thomas Lott opens his quarterback for Oklahoma number six, his first start. At the halfback, number four, Elvis Peacock. At the uh, fullback, it's Kenny King. And the other halfback will be Horace Ivory, number 32. Oklahoma is the home team on this neutral site. They are wearing the red shirts. And the Sooners come up and over the ball with Jody Farthing doing the snapping at center. Thomas Lott getting his first start because of the illness to Dean Blevins. Lott turns and he gives it inside to his fullback, Ken King, number 30. A 204-pound sophomore from Clarendon, Texas. Moves from the 41 to about the 38-yard line. The offensive front for the Oklahoma Sooners, Steve Rhodes, number 24, is the wide receiver. At the tackle position, it is Mike Vaughn. That's Carl Baldishweiler, who will be at one tackle. And number 75 is Jay Evans. Jody Farthing is the center. Number 65 is Greg Roberts. Back to the field now as a lot keeps the ball. A penalty flag goes down as he moves it from the 38-yard line to about the 35-yard line with Brad Shearer making the defensive play along with Rick Finlaw for Texas. Looks like the penalty goes against Oklahoma. Could be a very big penalty because we're well within Von Schumann's field goal range here and they are backed up out of range which could save three points for the Longhorns. Both men, uh, as the holding call goes against Oklahoma, both teams have extraordinary kickers in Uwe von Schumann of Oklahoma, who comes from Fort Worth, Texas. He was born in Berlin, West Germany, so to give you an idea of that name, von Schumann is a Uwe, a German by birth, but now a resident of Texas. And a kicker for the Texas Longhorns, Russell Erksleben, that is also a German name, but he lives down in Seguin, Texas. The defensive front, Phillips, Murray, Kinlaw, Tabor, and Bacchus for Texas. In motion, it is Horace Ivory. Number 32, the handoff goes to Elvis Peacock. And moving from the 45, 46-yard line, he gets no more than one. And Paul Jett, number 11, came from a cornerback position and really hit him. Oklahoma has not used that man in motion previously this year. The idea is to put him in motion to the side away from the split end in an attempt to spread the Texas secondary. Oklahoma knows Texas is going to play eight or nine men right up in the line of scrimmage to try to stop their running and to force them to throw. 
right, it's third down and 22 for Oklahoma from their own 47-yard line. As Lott goes down the line, gives it away on a straight pop ahead to Kenny King. Texas read the play well. Number 92, Ernest Lee, senior from Tyler, was there. Along with Shear, the Texas defense secondary, Peters, Hill, Henderson, and Anderson. Now Oklahoma goes into a punt. Mickey Hatcher, number 82, doing the kicking. Flavor is the deep man. Hatcher keeps it very, very high. Flavor waves fair catch, lets it go over his head. Oklahoma trying to get it. Got on the one yard line. Lee Hover, a 49 yard punt. And Texas is in trouble with the ball at their own one yard line. No score. Texas will come up for their second offensive possession and miserable field condition. They had it the first time just inside the five. Now they get it right on the one-yard line. They had a mistake in their first handling of the ball. They can ill afford a mistake here. As Pagaro hands it off to the big fullback Earl Campbell, and he just simply wedges it over the left side of the line, trying to get it out to give him a little bit of breathing room. You make a mistake here, and you've got to figure it's six points. Ivy Suber now goes out of the ball game for Texas. And checking in, it is Jimmy Walker, number 34. Jimmy Walker's had a sure a shoulder problem, a sore shoulder all season. He has not been effective. In fact, has played very little. But he is probably the most experienced man outside of, of Campbell. And here's a penalty flag down as Earl breaks it up near the 10-yard line. That penalty flag, however, was thrown in the direction of the line of scrimmage as Zach Henderson makes the stop for Oklahoma. It might very well be against Texas, and it is illegal procedure almost. You really backed up against the wall down there, Keith, and uh, we talked about field position being a key factor in the game because of the extraordinary field goal ability present on both sides. Uh, Texas has got to do something here to avoid field goal range for Oklahoma if they have to kick. Erksleben, the leading punter in the country at better than 48 yards on 13 points. There's the assessment of the penalty. The referee is Bill Jennings today. The umpire is Richard Stovall. Frank Ellis is the linesman. Larry Coven is the field judge. The back judge is Ed DeShannon with the line judge Roland Goss. Now Texas is back in the end zone. Back on the one-yard line. And they're going to throw it. Cadaro putting it up. Throwing it deep. Trying to let Jackson run under it. Can't reach it. Alfred Jackson going downfield, and right there with him all the way was Zach Henderson, number 19. Have to give him credit for the uh, courage of making the call. And Oklahoma had a good rush. Uh, but Arrow had good poise to get the ball away, but no chance for the completion. Now Erksleben will have to punt from his end zone again. Now the end zone is 10 yards deep. The football is on the one-yard line, so he is actually working here with about six less yards than he would normally have. Sooners don't put on the big rush. They let him hit it. He hits it. It's going to take a bounce. Bounces for Texas. Now takes a good Texas roll. And it's going to turn out to be a heck of a kick. Rolling all the way back to the 41 or 2 yard line of Oklahoma. 57 yards on the kick. But it was the roll that gave him at least 20 yards on it. That's one of those times where you're glad that the football's an odd shape, Keith. And you hope that it's going to bounce your way. The Oklahoma Sooners getting it now for their second offensive possession. And they get it at the 42-yard line. Both teams have had mistakes already in the game. This is one of those games usually where mistakes come back to haunt you. 10.33 to go. First quarter, no score. Thomas Lott sets with King, Ivory, Peacock behind him. Lott keeps it. And the youngster from San Antonio turns it up to the 46-yard line before Lionel Johnson, 96, and Rick Finlaw, 55, make the stop. These are perhaps uh, two of the best wishbone teams in college football or any place in the country as we watch the readjustment here. Great linebacking, fighting through the blocks. And he is on the tackle. Lott is a very strong runner, and uh, the Oklahoma coaches think a little better than perhaps in Glevin. Lott turned. It looked like almost a quarterback draw that time as he turned back up field. Number 13, Texas linebacker Bill Hamilton, who has been accepted to medical school, was right there to greet him. They put the football at the Oklahoma 49-yard line, where it is now third down and three. Both of these teams uh, practice against the wishbone all the time, Keith, and that gives them a superior advantage of recognition of what's coming at them from a defensive standpoint. Steve Rhodes is wide left. And in motion is Peacock. The handoff to Horace Ivory. 
And Ivory hits it to the midfield. Skitters over to about the 48. I think he's going to be about a yard short of his first down. It's going to be a tough call for Barry Switzer if it's as close as that. Uh, don't think he wants to sacrifice field position this early in the game, but if it's short yardage, there's always that tendency to maybe we ought to go for it. It's pretty close. They're not going to measure, apparently, as it is about, oh, not much more than a foot and a half or two feet short of the first down. Gives you some idea how important field position appears to both coaches. Claiborne now will be deep as Mickey Hatcher will punt it. Kick is in the air, and it's a beauty. And Claiborne backs up, waves the fair catch, and makes it at the nine-yard line. So now the Texas Longhorns get it, and they have had the ball three times, each time inside the 10. We still have no score. Now, America, the new Chevrolet. Now, now with its third offensive possession in the Patton Bowl, and the football is still down in deep in Texas territory at the nine-yard line. First down, the ball is handed to 34 Walker. Walker slants at the right side. He's got about five yards as he punches up to near the 14-yard line. And now let's spend a moment with Bill Fleming for some scores. All right, uh, Keith, just a very quick one here in that arch rivalry between Michigan and Michigan State. The game just concluded. Michigan has defeated Michigan State 42 to. 10. Arlen Huckleby got three touchdowns today. Quite an awesome offensive display. In now is Ivy Schubert for Texas, number 22, and he doesn't get much of uh, running room either, as there's a big red welcome waiting for him as he carries the ball. Phil Tabor, number 74, a sophomore out of Houston, right there to pop him. David Hudgens coming back off the field now uh, for the Oklahoma Sooners defensively as Texas is coming up on third down and they need five yards. Strange thing when you feel you've got running room, Keith, and you're out to the 14-yard line. They were backed up so far, but they're breathing easier even though they're way back in there. They got the extra defensive back in. They give the ball instead to Earl Campbell, and Campbell can't find any room to run. Mike Phillips, number 89, is right there along with Terry Peters. 16. So once again, Texas will have to go to the punt, except this time, Russell Erksleben is going to have a little bit of room in which to hit it. Strange that these two great offensive teams have each had two possessions. Neither one of them has made a first down. Give you some idea of how well the defenses are playing. Freddie Nixon, number 11, the return man from Oklahoma. And here's the kick by Erksleben. It's a knuckleball. You don't know which way it's going to bounce. Now it takes a Texas bounce, and it continues to roll. This time it rolls down to the Oklahoma 33-yard line, and finally stops. That's too much respect on the part of the uh, Oklahoma receivers. They've been so far back when Ertz Laven hasn't hit it quite like he normally does. They've let the ball hit and bounce, and that's a cardinal error. When a punt's in the air, you always ought to have somebody up catching it. 49 yards on the pot by the Texas punter, Ertz Laven. And now Oklahoma will go to work, call it the 30, well, the 32-yard line. It's closer to there. As Thomas Lott comes over the ball with King, Peacock, and Ivory behind him. Lott's got it. And he is hit at the 35-yard line. Number 92, Ernest Lee and Rick Finlaw, 55, following the play down the line. Getting a piece of the action was Mike Hartinger, number 49 for Texas. And watching these two teams play, Keith, it's sort of like you're watching a delayed action bomb. You don't know when it's going to go off. They just keep popping at each other short games, but sooner or later, somebody's going to break the big one and gain field position. Speaking of bombs, Lee Hover, who is the leading pass catcher for Oklahoma, has now come in at the wide receiver position, 5'8", 157-pound flyer from Morgan City, Louisiana. But they don't put it up. They go to Peacock, and Peacock is corralled up around the 36-yard line. Again, it is Hamilton, Hartinger, and Johnson, the three linebackers, getting him. Here's a look at Lionel Johnson doing his thing, number 96. He's a superior linebacker. He's big, he's strong. You can see him reading, just fighting off the block of Roberts, moving to the outside. Peacock got the pitch with room to run, but he was turned in by the corner man. Johnson sets beautifully, makes the tackle, and then there comes help, and you can see what kind of hitting we're having out there this afternoon. Lott still got the ball. Tries to run it over the right side, and again, there is good defensive positioning by Texas, and he has no room to move the football, so it's going to bring up a fourth down and about four, so Oklahoma will again go to the front with Mickey Hatcher back to do the kicking. He's a junior out of Mesa, Arizona. And it looks as though we're going to get the big rush this time from Texas. Raymond Claiborne is deep, and here come eight Longhorns. And 
they put some heat on him. He gets it very high, and finally Texas gets it out where they have reasonably decent field position as they have been exchanging punts, and so far Erksleben is winning the kicking game because uh, that time Hatcher only netted 33 yards on that kick. So now Texas has the ball at the 27. First down, here's Jim. You watch Oklahoma quarterback Thomas Lott today. There's an interesting irony that surrounds him. Two years ago, we wanted to do a piece for ABC Sports on the recruitment of a college football player. We were going to do it with Darrell Royal, and the player he wanted us to go along with him on a recruiting trip to see was Thomas Lott when he was playing a quarterback at San Antonio. Because of an NCAA rule, we couldn't do the story, but Royal wanted Lott badly. Cordero well, has the ball stripped by Mike Phillips, but is able to get it back. Just barely. So that's twice now. Cordero has lost control of the football, but each time he's been able to cover it. If you're a Texas fan, you call that an honest bounce. And the football bounced back to him right about the line of scrimmage at the 27, where it is second down and 10 for the Horns. They're wearing the white. They are, in a sense, the visiting team because of the flip of the coin. Jackson is wide to the left side. Cordero ends it off inside. There's almost nothing there for Earl Campbell. More than 15,000 high schools are conducting football programs this fall, contributing to the education of more than a million boys. The National Federation of State High School Associations urges you to support your interscholastic football program in your community. Now it is third down and nine yards to go from the 28-yard line. And it's a question, Keith, of who's going to hit a forward pass first, I believe. Both of these teams are two tough defensive teams against the run. Johnny Lamb Jones carries it for the first time in the ball game for Texas and trying to get outside to sweep it. Got nothing out of it. And the Oklahoma defense holding forces Texas into a fourth and nine, or an earth slaving is back to punt once more. Well, so far, the kicking edge has belonged to number 15. there as Freddie Nixon steps under it, feels it back at the 27-yard line. Down he goes at the 29. Good downfield coverage by Mike Hartinger for Texas. 46 yards on the punt, three and a half minutes to go for a quarter, no score. Here's your car battery. Add water. Keep it clean. It lasts an average of 38 months. Here's the battery that will make yours obsolete. The J.C. Penney battery. It started a revolution in car batteries. You never have to add water. It's so powerful, it's fully warranted for as long as you own your car. If it fails, return it. We'll replace it free. Only at J.C. Penney Auto Centers or Catalog Desks. It's the last battery your car will ever need. With insurance, you want an agent who roots for you, right? The Fireman Fund has some advice on how to find them. First, look for this symbol. But just as important, look for this symbol. For the man who sells our insurance, the independent agent. Because he represents not only us, but many fine companies. So he's free to get you the best possible deal. Look for the sign of the independent agent. Together with this symbol, we think you've got an unbeatable team. In the yellow pages, Fireman's Fund Insurance Companies. The Oklahoma Sooners flag for a clipping, and the football is moved back just inside the 15-yard line. So now the Sooners are back in dangerous area at their end of the field. While we're waiting for the ball to be snapped, let's check in with Bill again. All right, a big eight score. Uh, Colorado got on the scoreboard first, three to nothing, but Nebraska's come back in the second quarter to lead it seven to three. Keith. At his first down, Oklahoma just inside the 15 as Ivory goes in motion. The handoff to Elvis Peacock. It's a pop play over the left side to about the 17. Lionel Johnson again, number 96, getting in on the play. In this kind of uh, game of football where you're running this particular type of wishbone attack foot, those linebackers get a lot of action, don't they? they got to stop it inside first, then move to the outside to cut down anybody that is making a cutback after they've gone wide. Texas has gained great field position, though, on the four exchanges. Oklahoma out of them 41 the first time, then their own 42, then their own 32, and now their own 14. So far, we have no first downs in the ball game. It's second down and eight yards to go. And Lott hands it off inside again, running in the traffic. Right into Ernest Lee. And coming up out of the bottom of the stack is Kenny King, the fullback. And Oklahoma, of course, keeps hoping that on one of those quick hitting plays, somebody's going to miss the tackle, and Ivory, Culbertson, Peacock, somebody will break the long, long running play. But I do believe the team that throws the ball is going to open up the offense. Third down. 
Brady, a long three just outside the 20. Motion to the left, Peacock. Flip wide to King. King caught. Beautiful open field tackle by Paul Jett. At the line and back, it was trailing the play, but Jett made a heck of a play as he just locked the legs of the Oklahoma fullback. And so the Sooners will have to punt. Two minutes to go in the first quarter. The temperature down on the field in the middle 80s. The temperature up here in the middle 70s. And Hatcher's putt is in the air. Raymond Claiborne may try to take a run at this one. Slips away from one red shirt, from two red shirts, and now they wrestle him down up around the 44-yard line. So, Texas continues to gain in the kicking game as they now get the ball. First down at the 44-yard line after a 39-yard punt by Mickey Hatcher. And I've got to feel that Darrell Royal will throw the ball. It'll be some kind of a play-action fake, but obviously both teams playing the run so solidly that you have to use that third dimension. Say again that uh, Dean Blevins, who has been the starting quarterback the entire season for Oakland, Oklahoma is ill and is not here. He's hospitalized, and Thomas Lott is getting the first call. The referee Bill Jennings puts the ball down just short of the 45-yard line of Texas. The Oklahoma secondary is played against uh, Joe Roth in California, but I think it's interesting, Keith, the opponents against Oklahoma have hit over 51% of their passes. On first down, Cadaro coming down the line on the option, pitches it out. And it goes to Johnny Ham Jones from Hamlin, Texas. And he almost slipped away down the sideline before he was finally bundled out by Daryl Hunt. It looked for a moment like Hunt was going to be able to knock that football loose. But the Horns keep control of it, and the ball advances to the Oklahoma 48. And let's take a look at Hunt here as he slides to the outside. You can see the pursuit coming inside out. Everybody up the pitch. It was very good by Cordero. It didn't look as though Jones had any room to run, but he slipped those tackles and picked up the game. So it is second down and two yards to go, and for the first time, Texas has the football in Oklahoma territory. Barry Switzer on one side of the field and Darrell Royal on the other. And there have been some hot words passed around down in this neck of the woods as these two, as Royal has charged openly and bluntly, that Oklahoma has been spying on his practices. Second down and two. And the ball is handed off inside to uh, Earl Campbell. I thought for a minute that Campbell might have fumbled the ball away, went into the line, but somebody just reached in there and knocked his feet out from under him, and I think he lost about a half a yard on the play with only 126-25 now to go in the first quarter and no score. Looked like he had a little bit of a daylight there if that person hadn't slipped that ankle because the hole was open. He just couldn't quite get to it. It was a cutback play. Well, let's see if somebody puts it up here. In this particular instance, that somebody has to be Texas, but they keep it on the ground as it goes to Johnny Ham Jones. And he should have a Texas first down. That will be the first one in the ball game. A little bit of misdirection when you get everybody hitting and pursuing and you come back against the grain. There was just a little daylight, not much the first down, but... Uh, Somebody has broken the ice. University of Texas. Suber out and Walker in for the Texas backfield now. 22 out, 34 in. Tommy Kramer of Rice is playing tonight. Just some 30-odd miles down the road from here. He had a big uh, week throwing the ball against Texas last week. Here's the first pass of the ball game. It goes to Alfred Jackson trying to get him out into a one-on-one -on -one against Terry Peters. And while he slipped away from Peters, his feet slipped away from the ground. All the artificial surface here in the Cotton Bowl. Advanced the ball about eight yards. Call it second down and two as the ball is marked down near the 37. You get one-on-one -on -one against Jackson. He's going to be open on those short plays. Darrell said that he was a boy who used to have potential, and now he's got performance ability. He thinks he's a great player. 20 seconds to go in the first quarter. They take it inside, and there's nothing there. It's Earl Campbell again being defensed very well by the Oklahoma Sooners, and you know everywhere 20 goes today, then there's going to be a red shirt going with him. Winding down, that might very well have been the last play of the first quarter. So we played one here at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, and we have no score between Oklahoma and Texas. We'll be right back. Metropolis, if you will. And out here at the Cotton Bowl, that's where all the noise is coming from as Earl Kimball on third and one just goes ripping over the left side and he should have penetrated enough for the first down. Could be down around the Oklahoma 32-yard line. Oklahoma gave him uh, one man that time. He's going to put two on him and one against Campbell. He's going to pick up the first down for you. Oklahoma played their defense for the pitch out, which they expected on third down short yardage. 
Seven of the scores coming in. A halftime score out of the Big Ten. Purdue and Wisconsin. Good ball game going on there. And Minnesota jumping on Illinois. My goodness, the Gophers were clobbered by Washington last week out in Seattle, but they bounced back in Indiana. Trying to get a win over Northwestern today. Right here, we have no score on first down Texas at the Oklahoma 32. Penalty flags are down. There was a lot of dancing around up front. I don't know where the Texas line moved or whether Oklahoma might have encroached. Campbell gets the carry and gets about three yards. It's tough enough to make those first downs against these defense when it's first and 10, Keith. You don't want to start out first and 15, as will be the case for Texas after the penalty. The football is set down right at the 30. The indication was illegal procedure against Texas as they were moving around. Beginning to get both teams breaking the formation a little bit. They look at this wishbone all spring practice, uh, all during the fall. They recognize it perhaps better than anything. Since I was a kid, I think it's due to my father. You know, my father was probably the best football player ever to come out of Cincinnati. And it's just unfortunate that he couldn't go to college and play football. He had to, he had to work. He was a paper boy when he was in high school. He didn't get to play no high school football. You trying? Using those identity calls on them for the sake of the coaching staff as much as anything. And poor old announcers like me. But Johnny Jones, number 25, is from Hamlin, Texas. And Johnny Jones, number 26, is from Lampasas, Texas. It's first down and 15. Back at the 37. The penalty flag is on the ground. Ivy Stuber on a swing to the sideline. And he gets a pretty good whop as he gets down to the 33-yard line from Scott Hill, number seven. Strong safety. There's Darrell on the sidelines. He's got a fancier headset these years. Yes, he has. Uh, they don't use uh, the telephone anymore. This is a system that is walkie-talkie. It's a radio system that makes it a little easier for the coaches to move around, not get tangled up in any wires. The call this time goes offside Oklahoma. So now the Texas field captain has a chance to talk about it. It's Billy Gordon, number 62, the center. He's a senior out of Port Arthur. You can Here's the, the encroachment, apparently. There it is in the middle of the line. Just a little bit of a move too soon. He caught himself, but uh, couldn't quite get back on. I believe that that was freaky. This is a screen pass play. Cadero out there. He threw the pass well. And look at the pursuit that Oklahoma turns on here. Looked like he had room to run, and it just closed like a snap. So we've swapped penalties. Texas now trying to move it up the middle with Campbell, and it is from the 32 to about the 28-yard line. Should be the better part of four yards before Reggie Kinlaw, a sophomore out of Miami, and O.B. Moore, a linebacker number 57. you got a Finlaw playing that middle position or a linebacking position for Texas, and you got a Kinlaw playing the nose guard position for Oklahoma, and they come from different areas of the country. Second down, and it's about seven yards to go. This is number 25, Johnny Ham Jones, 180-pound sophomore carrying, sliding over to the left side in the neighborhood of the 25. Here's Bill, more scores. Well, we have one item, uh, Keith, that I think our fans are going to be interested in. Uh, Pittsburgh defeated Louisville today, 27-6, to uh, with Tony Dorsett getting 130 yards. But Matt Cavanaugh, the Pittsburgh quarterback, suffered a hairline fracture of his left ankle. He's going to be out for four to six weeks. That means Pittsburgh, both of their quarterbacks now are gone, Haygood and uh, Cavanaugh. Ball is loose. Oklahoma recovers it. Number 85, Wayne Backus. Oh, it's uh, Darrell Hunt on the ball. Darrell Hunt recovering the loose football. So the fumble continues to haunt the Texas Longhorn. With 12.56 to go first half, we have no score. <laughs> Don't let an overheated car spoil your driving. Say, have your independent Texaco retailer check your car's cooling system regularly and protect it with Texaco antifreeze and coolant. No other coolant of this type protects better against boilover. And it helps prevent rust and corrosion all year long. Texaco antifreeze and coolant. These are two scientific calculators that cost about the same. On the left, a really remarkable machine, the Hewlett Packard HP-21. On the right, a National Semiconductor, model 4640. The National Semiconductor has all the functions and features the other one has, plus 20 the other one doesn't have. So if the Hewlett Packard is a really remarkable calculator, what does that make ours? Fifty-six to go in the first quarter. No score in the ball game. Texas pumping the ball away. Oklahoma gets it at the 21-yard line. First down, Peacock in motion. Thomas Lott keeping the ball. 
almost got around the corner. He gets whipsawed up around the 24 for a gain of three. And that fumble was a three-point fumble in all likelihood. Herzl then well within his range for the field goal. But from a coaching standpoint, Keith, you, you kind of look at it that it didn't cost us any points as we look at the first quarter statistics and you can see how close to the best both teams are playing. Total yards, Texas one ahead, 32 to 31. There weren't any turnovers in the first quarter. Time about even. The Texas fumble probably kept them from three points. Second down, seven yards to go at the 24-yard line of Oklahoma. Take it inside with Kenny King. He is pushed back. He must have moved the ball up to around the 25-yard line. This Monday night, ABC's NFL Monday Night Football, San Francisco 49ers in Los Angeles against the Rams. Jim Bucket, James Harris, two of the premier quarterbacks in the NFL, will go at it. They're fighting for first place in the NFC's Western Division. 49ers and the Rams this Monday on ABC's NFL Monday Night Football at 9 Eastern time over most of these ABC stations. Now it is third down and six yards to go for Oklahoma at their own 25. Peacock again in motion. Oklahoma's yet to put it up. Lot sets now, throws. He's got his tight end, number 80, Victor Hicks, and he's got a first down for the Sooners out near the 41-yard line. And that was very well executed play. Peacock in motion took the corner man way back and out as we take a look at it again. Came off the handoff fake. Tight end just simply dipped into the open area that was vacated by Claiborne. And Oklahoma makes their first first down of the game. Mike Vaughn has come off the field for Oklahoma. Sam Clappen is in there now at right tackle. Vaughn was limping, obviously, when he came off. He apparently hurt an ankle. Lock turns and hands, and there's nothing there. As Elvis Peacock, the junior out of Miami, Florida, tries to wedge a little distance, and I think he might have even lost some because the ball is put down back close to the 40. So there is nothing there for it. Tonight at 8 Eastern time, the beginning of the National League playoff. Championship playoff between the Cincinnati Reds and the Philadelphia Phillies. It'll come to you from Philadelphia. The two ball clubs that many say may be the two best teams in all of baseball right now. They're hammer throwers. It should be exciting. 8 o'clock tonight live over most of these ABC stations. Here's lot keeping. Turns inside up to the 44. Ball loose, but he may have been down. Texas man got it. who was not expected to play because of uh, hamstring trouble sneaks into the ball game he's the brother of Earl and bang right away he's involved in a big play just the kind of thing of course both teams hope to avoid the turnovers can make the difference in a tight tight defensive game and knock loose from the ball and you know, coming across making the recovery and Texas has excellent field position one first down and they're in field goal range Keeps it. Fires it. Jackson incomplete. Bad pass. Threw it short. Here's Jim. You probably noticed that gold medal Johnny Lamb Jones has not played yet for Texas. He has a deep back bruise. I just talked to the Texas team physician. They said that Lamb can play. They'd like to avoid it, but if this game is still tight in the second half, we might see him. Number 26. Keith. Thank you, Jim. Pass thrown behind the intended receiver. Alfred Jackson. So the ball stays right at the 44 of Oklahoma. Second down, 10, Texas. And you can bet it's going to be tight in the second half. Cadero gives it away to Johnny Ham Jones. And boy, does he take a lick from Reggie Kinlaw, the nose guard, number 62. He got maybe a yard, but that nose guard was standing up by the time he arrived, and he was really able to put some leverage on him. Watch it here. Kinlaw sliding around a stunt play. Well, looks like he's picked up a little bit there by Gordon, but he's just too active. He just bounced off Gordon's block, came right back in, made the tackle on the draw play. How do you do? Third down and 10. Godaro to throw. Goes over the middle with it. It is complete for Jackson, and the ball is loose. It is down, and it's oh. Texas ball. Texas keeps it. I guarantee you, Keith, there's going to be some Oklahoma people wondering about that decision. Jackson was really ripped. The ball came loose, but one of the officials was right there and immediately called the Texas ball as the ball came squirting loose after Jackson went down, and you can see why. Here it is. Jackson coming from his foot end position. Cordero, a good passer in Darrell Royal's terms, which means he's probably a little better than that. He laid it right on the target, and he's down on the ground. The referee said that he was on the ground before the ball popped loose. He clearly had made the reception. 
It's first down for Texas. Terry Peters, number 16, was the man who decked him and knocked him out of the ball game. We still have no score with 9.52 to go. Hey, look. It's Texas State Fair time here in Dallas, and it's going on all around the Cotton Bowl. But inside the bowl, there is some booing and hooting because uh, the Oklahoma folks thought they had the ball. Now they got a shot at it, and they get it. Ball was given to Johnny Ham Jones, and he really took a lick as he tried to skate through the line of scrimmage, and the ball squirted loose, and Mike Phillips covers it for the Oklahoma Sooners, and they get it back. Yeah, let's, uh number 85 Hunt there when I get the back and go to the replay but uh, that's twice now that Texas has turned the ball over when they were within field goal range a little cutback play it broke the first time but uh, he was hit just as he got the ball that was Anderson coming in to make the recovery around the Scott Hill 9.47 to go first half Oklahoma gets it back just inside their own 20 no score and Thomas Lott flips and goes down behind the line of scrimmage back of the 18 yard line Brad Fear number 77 was right there to cover him Southwest Conference called the option conference because that's the birthplace of the Texas wishbone the Houston beer and all kinds of fancy things Southwest Conference had teams among the top 10 rushing schools in eight of the last 10 seasons so they like to run and thunder down here in the Southwest Conference and they do a good job with it and you've got two of the great ones right here the great practitioners of the wishbone in Oklahoma and Texas it is second down call it 12 yards to go for the Sooners back at the 18 yard line lot rolling left got a little problem back there and he's going to go down as number 49 Mike Hartinger a junior out of Colorado Springs shirt tailed him back at the five yard line the story on Alfred Jackson, Jim Lampley will tell us. Temporarily, Keith Texas has lost another key offensive performer. Alfred Jackson has badly bruised ribs. The Texas team doctor says they'll keep him out probably at least until halftime and make a determine then, determination then as to whether he can play again. All right. Loss of 12 on the sack by Hartinger as Hatcher goes into the end zone to punt. Texas is almost certain to get good field position. Mickey Hatcher hits it. Wobbles it upfield, and Claiborne feels it, and that was a massive mistake. The question now as to whether or not Ray Claiborne will get up. Yeah, he's all right. The 37-yard punt. A little bit of hitting down there. All right, the football now will be put down at the 44-yard line of Oklahoma, where it'll be first down for the Texas Longhorns. Call it the 45, more scores, Bill. Well, we have a live report here, uh, Keith, from Boulder, Colorado, from Mike Moran on the Nebraska-Colorado game. How about a quick one here, Mike? come back to live action here in the Cotton Bowl. We'll try to update you. You saw the score 12-7. The Buffaloes getting the lead over Nebraska as Mike Cordero, the Texas quarterback, kept the ball on the play. Let's call it the Oklahoma 45 for the starting point. They were just inside the 45, and he gained about a, a yard and a half on the play. And I keep thinking that Texas is going to throw the ball back against the green. They're going to start the wishbone action one way. Cordero's going to go back to throw and then hit it across the field. I think he'll get some one-on-one -on -one coverage if he does that and may hit it. Mike Lockett is in there at the wide receiver position replacing Alfred Jackson. Here's Cordero in trouble. And the Texas quarterback is sacked all the way back around the 44-yard line of Texas. And Scott Hill, the strong safety, was coming all the way. And then Dwayne Backus, number 88, joined him, and they got him. Had the good call there, but uh, the defense didn't cooperate. They do red probable pass by Texas and came with the entire front and the linebackers. That strong safety kill. One of the guys that I sort of tend to categorize Bud is a fellow who thinks, who in fact can fly and chew at the same time. I think that is right. 5'11", 192 pound senior, and he's seen it all. 45 yard line. They hand it off. It goes to Suber. Ivy Suber slides down, trying to cut away from number 17, Jerry Anderson. Gets it back around the Oklahoma 45. And now it'll bring up a kicking down, fourth down and 11 for Texas. And thus far, Keith, on net punt yardage, Texas has been picking up eight yards per exchange. Texas average 46.2, Oklahoma 38.4, and we've got everybody out there but the kicker, strangely <laughs> enough, and we're going to get a little time out. That's one where, uh, believe me, you don't want to snap that ball. <laughs> Hartinger was standing out there ready to block and said, hey, wait a minute, there's nobody behind me. Coach, what are we doing here? Time is called by Texas. We'll be back. Still no score. To number 11 deep. 
Russell Erksleben is in for a field goal try. That will be a 62-yarder. Uh, don't stop. He's got the range. He can do it if he hits it just right. Didn't get enough of it. Drifts off to the right side. Goes into the end zone. Oklahoma gets the football. First down at their 20-yard line as Erksleben's field goal try from 62 yards is short and wide to the right. All right, Bill. Hey, I think we are now through to Mike Moran. And, Mike, uh, give us an update on that score. We had a 12-7. Is that still the way it is? they were having a little trouble with our communications around the country but it's still 12 7 Colorado over Nebraska from the 20 yard line the Sooners take it inside with Jim Culbreth now a 209 pound senior from Yedden Pennsylvania number 41 in the lineup he's the young man who walked on the field said I want to play qualified for a scholarship and he said don't need it give it to somebody who does this Oklahoma team is the fourth in rushing in college football thus far this year. But interestingly, Keith, they've made only 66 first downs against 74 by their opponents, which gives you some idea of why I keep saying it's kind of a time bomb out there. They may pop one anytime. Over, wide left, Oklahoma, second down. And eight yards to go. Give it away to Horace Ivory to the 27 spinning before the horns get a hold of him and bring him down. And next Saturday on NCAA College Football, ABC Sports offers regional football games, games and times will be announced on Monday. We invite you to check your local listings for the game and time in your area. And join us for regional coverage of college football next Saturday over most of these ABC stations. The football is at the 27th of Oklahoma now, where it is third down and just about three. They've got to go to the 30 to get their first down. At number 80 is Victor Hicks, who caught a first down pass a few moments ago from Thomas Lott, number six. What to do here? The send Peacock in motion. Lot pitches it outside. Horace Ivory drops the ball. A lot of white shirts down there, and they've nailed him all the way back around the seven-yard line. Bill Hamilton, number 13. And it got him. Loss of 21 yards. And that's going to make Oklahoma just exactly even on total rushing offense. They had made 20 yards on 19 plays prior to that fumble. It continues to be the kind of a ball game we expected it might be. Defense, defense, defense. Hit, 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 too, Keith. <laughs> Absolutely. Mickey Hatcher out of the end zone. Gets some pressure, hangs it high. Raymond Claiborne is going to field it. This time, however, he has the good common sense to call fair catch because the last time they almost took his head off. But still, Texas has very good field position. He didn't make too clear a signal that time, Keith. He just gave it one quick wave. The Oklahoma lineman coming down the field did see it. I was in doubt about whether he'd made a legal signal. At the Oklahoma 48, first down for Texas, and here's the signal that Bud's talking about. Moving to the outside, and you can see him put his hand up and just wave at once, and baby, that is not much that I do want to make a fair catch. <laughs> Help! 48 now for the horn. Campbell, Suber, and Ham Jones. And they stay inside with the big guy, Campbell. And not much there. In rushing so far, Earl on the season came into this ball game with 55 carries, 309 yards, averaging five and a half yards. In this game, he's carried nine times, picked up a total of 16. The Oklahoma starting backfielder have averaged 7.5 yards per carry. So it gives you some idea of how well both teams are executing here in the first half on defense. No gain by Kimball. It is second down and 10 as Cordero sets the throw, gets it off. The pass is complete. At the Oklahoma 31-yard line to Mike Lockett, number 47. He's a freshman from Fort Worth. He really goes for the ball here. He's a split end, having replaced Jackson, who hurt his ribs. He weaves by the corner man, turns, hooks, and Cordero has it a little bit to the outside, but Lockett just goes and finds the ball. First down, Texas. Yeah, but you know something, bud? I don't see but one man out in those patterns. That's all there is. They need the other people to defend against them. Penalty flags as the play goes inside to Kimball, and it came from the man wearing the white hat, working in the offensive backfield, and it almost certainly means just that illegal procedure. Almost tell where the bad news is coming from, from the direction of the flag. Texas has been going on a very quick count, getting to the line of scrimmage and snapping the ball so that hopefully Oklahoma will not have a chance to call the stunts on their defense. And that time they just didn't quite 
stand still for the full second. We've just received word, Keith, that they've taken Jackson to the dressing room for observation. We won't know until the second half starts whether he'll be available for duty. Football has moved back now to the 36-yard line where it will be first down and 15 for the Texas Longhorns. And tonight at 8 o'clock, over most of these ABC stations, Don Gullett, left-hander for Cincinnati, and Steve Dalton, left-hander for the Philadelphia Phillies as they begin the National League Championship Playoff Series. It is Johnny. Hutzel's been trying a field goal from some 60 yards. This is the third time that we've been clearly within his range that Texas has lost the ball on a fumble. Scott Hill fumbling around there trying to get a handle on that thing. Finally decided the best thing might be just to sit down on it. That's exactly what he did. Here's the play. And that's particularly true when in college football he can't pick it up and run with it. There's no reason not to drop on it. Here come the Sooners at the 33-yard line. First down. Watch pass. Got it down. Intercepted. Taylor flag. On the field. Hartinger got the ball for Texas, and he's dropped at the 36 yard line. Bill Hamilton, the man that batted it up in the air, the linebacker, and Hartinger made the interception. And penalty flags indicated here against Oklahoma. If that's the case, then certainly Texas will take the ball. Marvelous defense thus far. We've had all kinds of offensive mistakes forced by the defense. But Texas comes in now again with excellent field position. Call it the Oklahoma 37-yard line. As Hamilton slapped it in the air on the old tip drill. Pays off one more time as Hartinger was right there to grab it. Shadow is beginning to reach out toward the playing surface now as the game started. Now Darrell has just said to his team, Please don't fumble on this possession. If you aren't going to make a first down, at least let us keep possession and have a field goal. With three minutes and 32 seconds to go in the first half, Cordero turns it upfield. And you heard that old homily down in this part of the country about Bulldogging. You just saw it right there. Take a look at number 85, Darrell Hunt, the short side linebacker for Oklahoma. He just ignores the fake to Campbell here, moves to the outside on the stunt. And then it turns into a foot race between Cordero and Hunt. Hunt's got just as much speed. You can see the corner man, Anderson, protecting for the pitch as the tackle is made. Knows the ball, just touching the 33. Second down, seven. Cordero gives it on a reverse to Lockett. He's got a picket line of the 16 Peter. If 16 doesn't get that flying wide receiver coming around on that deep reverse, he might have scored. Did a good job of getting around the outside. Here it comes again. He's a split in. And you can see him as he gets the pitch. This is a play that Oklahoma ran to beat Michigan last year in the Orange Bowl game. He simply gets outside the two leverage men. Looks as though he's got some room to run. Just turn Peter. So Peters comes across to make the touchdown saving tackle. Football moves. That play for the 31. For a two-yard pickup, third down and five. It into the middle of the field, down to the 30-yard line, and here comes number 15 in a white shirt for Texas, Russell Erksleben, bringing a kick and tee with him. It's one of the fastest games I remember, Keith. These teams don't have any incomplete passes, so the clock is never killed. Seems like we just started, and there are only two minutes and 25 seconds it's been raining in the first half. All right, Jimmy Thompson will hold, and Russell will try it. It'll be a 46-yard field goal if he hits it. Trajectory. He's wide to the right. So they missed the field goal. They finally give Russell a chance to hit it. And Erksleben's kick sails off to the right side. And it was very low trajectory. I was surprised it wasn't blocked because of Oklahoma hands high in the air. And so at 2.09 to go in the first half of play, we look at the folks over on the old roller coaster. And now. The sun shines bright on the Cotton Bowl. The Sooners get the ball back. Let's pause five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. 13, KTR, KTV. Oklahoma. Oh, this Ivory fumbles the football. Texas gets it at the 26-yard line. And so they're just swapping mistakes at number 28, Steve Collier. It's on the ball for the Horn. 
so many people penetrating all the time, Keith. That both teams defensively going right with the snap of the ball. If the ball carriers are being hit just about the time they're getting the ball or having to make a move away from the quarterback on the handoff, and once again, Texas has right field position. Brad Shear, number 77, big defensive tackle, the man that knocks it loose. Here it is again. A little bit of an inside fake, kind of a counter play, and Ivory's got that great movement. Ball is popped loose as he tries to maneuver away from the tacklers, and now they're all white shirts over it. Back to live action as the Texas quarterback tries to cut it upfield. Going down the line on the option play, slips and falls. He may have gained the yard. No more. So each team's turned it over three times here in this first half with a minute and 40 seconds remaining. Coming up at halftime, the Fireman's Fun flashback featuring the 1968 game between the Horns and the Sooners. And you figure turnover has cost you about 40 to 45 yards since it's 3 to 3 while well, we've got balance on how many yards it's cost each team. Call it second down 10. Cordero. Ball loose again. for the call. They say, nope, Texas keeps it. I'll make that point again, Keith, that both defenses are slanting and stunning on every snap, and there's so much around the ball as it's being handed off that the ball carriers are not getting a chance really to put the ball away very well. Earl Campbell, uh, it was Johnny Ham Jones, number 25. Like, he was down on the bottom of the stack. Mike Phillips is right there, scratching and grabbing at the ball. Third down, eight now, from inside the Oklahoma 25. Texas still with a great opportunity to get the three points. Here's Johnny Ham Jones carrying to the 21-yard line of Oklahoma. And that's going to leave him third down, quite short. And so Ertz Laban will come back one more time. As we take a look again at Daryl Hunt, this is a little draw play that Texas has been running. It's been about as effective as anything they've tried. Hunt forgets about pass, reads the draw, comes in and makes an excellent tackle. Laban in the scoring only one out of six in his field goal prize. This will be a 37 yarder out of the hold of Jimmy Thompson. It's up. It looks good. It is good. And so the Texas Longhorns finally get some points on the board with 20 seconds to go in the first half. Sure did come hard though, didn't it? They sure did. They kept turning it back to each other. Marvelous defense by both teams, Keith. Uh, most times I think people love to see the ball moved up and down the field offensively, but if you like to study on how defense ought to be played, both of these teams are doing it this afternoon. Only 20 seconds remaining in the first half as Texas takes the lead by a score of 3 to nothing. 37-yard field goal. Steve Rhodes and Freddie Nixon now will go deep as Ertzleben will kick it off from his 40-yard line. So he's two out of seven in his field goal kicking, but keep this in mind, too, that a lot of those tries have been way out from left field. When you're out there poking away on that edit from 45 yards out, it's pretty hard to hit him. This is a very short kickoff for Erksleben. That is, he didn't kick it out of the stadium. It is fielded by Steve Rhodes of Oklahoma, trying to get it up the sideline. Does a good job with it. Takes it two yards deep in the end zone and brings it back to about the 28-yard line. 29, maybe. 13 seconds left. Uh, Oklahoma team that doesn't throw the ball on expected passing down very well, and you've got to feel that uh, they're going up halftime behind by three points. Well, it's in Victor Hicks out there at the tight end position. And Rhodes, number 24, will stay at the wide receiver position or split end. But Oklahoma has thrown the ball when they have thrown it to Peacock and Ivory on occasion. Not very often. One each so far on the season. They've caught them has caught three and Rhodes has caught two and it's Rhodes wide left and this may cost Oklahoma five here for too much time and Texas has got everybody backed off they're going to not let them make a long game they're going to rush three people eight people in the secondary so not wise for Oklahoma to try to break something big Jimmy Ritz our statistician timeouts uh, Texas with two left I believe centers have all of theirs I guess Looks like Oklahoma's coach Barry Switcher does not want to spend them here. He's going to go to the locker room. 
three down. He hopes, unless they make a mistake here. And that time, uh, you see positive indication of his decision as his quarterback just simply took the ball and covered it. That'll run out the clock. The percentages are so much against the Chiefs, but that's a wide play. All right, time runs out of the first half here at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas. In this 71st meeting between Texas, Oklahoma, and the Longhorns lead by a score of three to nothing. Here's Jim Lampley. Coach, I'm sure all this defense doesn't surprise you. Well, not a great deal. I thought either one of us going to have a hard time moving the football. I think both sides are extremely tight and tense. We're causing those costly, uh, having those costly, costly fumbles. Both sides, as a matter of fact. I've, we've been in field goal range twice and fumbled them away, but they fumbled it right back to us, so it's about a hoss and a hoss. It's just two uh, greatly fired up football clubs playing good defensive Let me football. ask you one question. You said all week that the hoopla of the president, the possible spying incident wouldn't affect the players. After all these fumbles, are you sure that's still the case? Well, I don't think President Ford's caused any fumbles. No, but that's I mean, the, but, the, but the rest of the tension surrounding the game, the possible spying uh, incident. I said but... they're tense and they're tight. Sure, they're keyed up and ready to play. Okay, thank you very much, Coach Royal, for spending time with us. We'll be back with more from the Cotton Bowl and all our halftime festivities when we return after this. Back in 1893, winters were made easier thanks to Dave Lennox and his first furnace. But the heat was spotty, not automatic. How about some heat up here? Today, Dave's furnace is a central heating system, a nifty weather machine that provides smooth, moisturized heat. Our exclusive DuraCurve heat exchanger is quiet, very efficient. Feels great, Dave. Look in the yellow pages for Lennox Central Heating Systems. You're all heart, Dave. It's the Captain and Tennille, with special guest stars Nancy Walker and Art Carney as the Captain and Tennille. Jimmy J.J. Walker and David Soule. Listen, cement friend, I'm talking big money, do you hear me? Big money! Big enough for you? This week, make it a date with the Captain and Tennille. Monday followed by San Francisco at Los Angeles on NFL Monday Night Football on ABC. Massive hydraulic fracturing demands the ultimate in equipment design. Big, innovative, reliable. Western has it. Special sand storage and delivery systems for million pound jobs. Rugged blenders, powerful pumps, advanced electronic controls, capable people. The total package, Rocky Mountain Tough. And Western has it. If you don't have an oil well, get one. You'll love doing business with Western. Pay setters. I started my own campaign 21 months ago. I didn't have any political organization, not much money, nobody knew who I was. We began to go from one living room to another, one labor hall to another, up and down the streets, back to shift lines, barber shops, beauty parlors, restaurants, shaking hands, talking to people, and listening to special interest groups. I owe nothing to the people. I owe everything. Channel 13, KTRK-TV, Houston. This is Bill Fleming, back at the Cotton Ball in Dallas, Texas, and we've seen just about as exciting a first half as you'd ever want to see between these two teams with the Longhorns of Texas getting a field goal by Erksleben in the closing moments of the first half to take a 3 to nothing lead. And, of course, the Longhorns are inspired today. It's been five long years since they have won this game, and there has been a lot of heated controversy this past uh, year about the game, and particularly during this past week. Well, as you know, as part of our regular NCAA series, we named the offensive and defensive players of the game following the game, and the Chevrolet Motor Division then sends a check for $1,000 to their respective school general scholarship fund. Also, this year, we are sending a plaque to that uh, particular school, and this plaque will have engraved on it the performance of that athlete as he performed here on October the 9th, 1976. And that will be a part of the permanent trophy case in that uh, particular school. You know, down through the years, there have been a lot of really great football games between Texas and Oklahoma. I don't have to tell you that. But I think one of the most significant ones occurred in 1968, and that'll be part of our Fireman's Fund flashback today. Today's Fireman's Fund flashback is brought to you by Fireman's Fund Insurance. And Fireman's Fund Insurance is brought to you by an independent agent near you. Look for his name in the yellow pages. Well, we're going to go back to 1968. 
If you recall, that's when Texas began the wishbone. Coming into the game, they had a mark of one, one, and one. And in this particular game, the score was 19 to 14, and we are joining it in the fourth quarter. Texas leading with 8.24 to go, and there is Bobby Warnack on a keeper going in for Oklahoma. Oklahoma is charged with the delay of the game on the point after. The ball is moved back. Warmack tries to hit Steve Zobel for the point after. And it is not good. And Oklahoma leads 20 to 19. Now with less than two minutes to go, Texas has the ball in driving. James Street hitting Daryl Comer over the middle. Then he hits Daryl Comer again for 21 yards. Now with less than a minute to go, first and 10 on the OU 21. Steve Worcester goes 14 yards on a draw play down to the seven yard line. And on the next play, Worcester goes off right guard for seven yards. Happy Feller kicked the extra point and Texas won it, 26-20. The day the wishbone survived its most severe test. You're looking at one of the best known. Be a great part of the Texas Oklahoma game of the bands. Both bands are here today, and right now we're looking at the show band of the Southwest the University of Texas Longhorn Band under the direction of Tom Rhodes. And uh, during this next number, which you'll recognize immediately as the Yellow Rose of Texas, we'll have the band flag section: the Major Ed Sedana Wilman, Nancy Crosby, and Janice Crosby, and. Uh, a very fine rendition as we look from high above the Cotton Bowl here in Dallas. Because of the late kickoff here, we do have a number of finals here for you this afternoon. And we'll take a quick look as we see them. Michigan defeated uh, Michigan State 
42 to 10. As I mentioned to you, Pitt lost its quarterback, Matt Cavanaugh, for from four to six weeks in that victory over Louisville today. He had a fractured ankle. And you can see Texas leading third-ranked Oklahoma. Mississippi defeating Georgia. There's quite an upset today. Ole Miss over Georgia. Nebraska is now leading. I think that uh, I think that's wrong. I think Colorado is leading Nebraska 12-7. That's the way we had it. And tonight, UCLA Stanford. Maryland is uh, leading North Carolina State. Oh, that's a final. That is now a final. 16-6. And a final. Oklahoma State over Kansas, 21-14. And how about this one? Missouri 28, Kansas State 21 in the fourth quarter. And of course, USC plays Washington State tonight. Well, some surprises. Well, Saturday in the fall for the student athlete or the coach at an NCAA institution has been described many times in the past. But what about the coach's wife? What kind of a day is it for her? We'll listen now to Donnell Tapp, whose husband earned National Coach of the Year honors at Baylor back in 74. Football coaches wear many hats, and on this football Saturday... Bill Saturdays typify those of most other coaches' wives in the fall, and she will expand on her myriad of responsibilities on the ABC Sunday Highlight Show later on in the season. The preceding message was presented on behalf of the National Collegiate Athletic Association. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we come to the University of Oklahoma Marching Band. And as I mentioned, this is a game where we have 72,000 seats, and it's equally split between the two schools. It's really most unusual to have a college game at a neutral site like this year after year, and the crowd so evenly split. And of course, the enthusiasm we hear is evenly split also. Now with company front formations, the band with its excellent percussion section provides a very interesting moment with champion twirler Miss Pam Martin from Los Altos, California. The percussion section is right out in front and is, is Miss Pam Martin. She has won numerous national and world titles, one of the outstanding twirlers in the United States today. The band is performing the exciting Quincy Jones hit, Chump Change. Just uh, join us on this delightful autumn afternoon. Texas is leading Oklahoma 3 to nothing on a field goal by Russell Burtzlein in the closing moments of the first half in a very hard-fought, tough defensive struggle. Pride of Oklahoma Marching Band featuring Miss Pam Martin. This time
Texas-Oklahoma game is being brought to you by Texaco, makers of Haviland Super Premium, a motor oil designed to help keep down the cost of car maintenance. And by National Semiconductor Digital Watches and Calculators. And now from the theme of the motion picture Mahogany, the band will end this halftime performance. After the theme from Mahogany, they will have a medley complete with a swing section directly to my way as the band sets up for the finale. And then, of course, they'll follow that with the song dearest to the hearts of all Oklahoma fans, Boomer Sooner. As you see some of the scores coming to the bottom of your screen, there were a lot of upsets today. And don't forget the Prudential College scoreboard. Dave Diles will follow, immediately follow our, our telecast here today. He'll have all the information for you. And we'll keep you up to date as we can uh, as those games progress. goes down to defeat as the finale concludes here. And Maryland defeats North Carolina. Look at this one. Mississippi over Georgia after Georgia's trouncing of Alabama last week. Well, that SEC conference is just as topsy turvy as all the rest of them. And Boomer Sooner being played as the band marches off the field. To the 110,000 alumni, the red and white of the University of Oklahoma symbolize the dynamic spirit of their university and their state. Both were founded on the western frontier by the fiery determination and hard work of pioneers who went west to seek a better life. Proud of that heritage, OU provides the opportunity for a better life through education to some 23,000 students. The university is now in its 86th year. It preserves its pioneer past in a unique collection of Western history and art. But the 15 colleges at OU are as modern as today. Mindful that Oklahoma is an energy state, OU is the home of the first school of petroleum geology in the nation. Indeed, OU graduates in geology and geophysics outnumber those of any other university in the entire world. The OU Health Sciences Center has grown into a comprehensive medical education and research complex that trains some of the nation's finest doctors, dentists, nurses, and allied health professionals. The University of Oklahoma, where the spirit of learning is a lasting frontier. Well, it's halftime here at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas. The score, three to nothing. The Longhorns leading. We're getting very close to the second half kickoff. Both of these guys spent all morning cutting with chainsaws. One used an ordinary chainsaw. The other used the Poland Counter Vibe, a powerful new lightweight with automatic chain oil, a super quiet muffler, and a shock absorbing system that reduces vibration up to 78%. So, which guy used the new Poland Counter Vibe, and which one didn't? short about 70 miles this is Bob for Texaco Hope in the Gulf of Mexico this water is 260 feet deep it can cost up to six times more to drill for oil out here than on land 
But we've got to do this if America's to become less dependent on unreliable sources of oil from abroad. At Texaco, we're working to keep your trust. Two times eight equals 14. The quiz kid. It doesn't just give children something to do. Equals. It gives them something to think about. Sixteen. The Quiz Kid from National Semiconductor. Tonight, ABC Sports presents the opening game of the National League Championship Series as the Cincinnati Reds take on the Philadelphia Phillies. Join Al Michaels, Tom Seaver, and me, Warner Wolf, for all the color and excitement. Here in the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Texas, the Longhorns from Austin lead the Sooners from Norman by a score of 3 to nothing. A 37-yard field goal by Russell Erksleben, the difference of the ball game. And it's been one of those really knock them down and beat them up kind of football games as the defense has really totally dominated the game. As you can see, it's the halftime statistics. These two of the better offensive teams in football. Oklahoma averaging 381 yards a game going into this afternoon and Texas 349. Neither team able to muster 100 yards in the first half. Uh, Oklahoma had one net yard in the third quarter. Their quarterback, of course, got pinned for a couple of big losses. But the longest game from scrimmage thus far, a 17-yard pass. All right, let's spend a moment with Coach Barry Switzer and Jim Lampley. Coach, what are you going to do to get your offense moving? I'll tell you what, uh, we've got to do something. Texas is playing great defense, playing great defense. I'm proud of our defense. Too many turnovers poor field position. That's why we like to kick off, try to play field position here with the win and try to get some, make something happen here in the third quarter. Thanks very much for spending time with us, Barry Switzer. Now let's go back up to Keith and Bud. All right, Jim, that's an interesting call as they decide to take the wind and go for putting Texas in a hole as Oklahoma chooses, having the option to start the second half, to kick off. As you look down from the Goodyear Blimp America, the Dick Daniels out of Houston, Texas, providing our flying camera platform today. And as you can see, it's an absolutely spectacular day in the Southwest. I don't see a cloud anywhere. The temperature most comfortable. The cotton bowl is stuffed full of football partisans. And we're ready to go. A standing beat for the Texas Longhorns. It is Braylon Wyatt, number 40. And here is Uwe Van Stroman's uh, kickoff into the end zone. And there'll be no return of that one. So Texas will get the football first down at their 20-yard line. That's exactly the strategy that Barry Switzer planned. He knew that Von Schumann could kick the ball over the end line, perhaps, and put Texas back on the 20, which they did. Now let's check the horns as they come out to start the second half offensively. It will be Ivy Suber, Earl Campbell, and Johnny Ham Jones. We're still waiting to see Johnny Lamb, the Olympic sprinter. The offensive line, Lockett, James Ingram, Gordon, Wilcox, Studdard, and Sam Ford. Out there in place of Alfred Jackson, who took a heavy jolt in the ribs and has not returned to the game since that time. First down, Texas. Cordero, the quarterback, keeps it. And Mike gets two yards before he is belted down. He's hit by number 62, Reggie Kinlaw, and number 57, Obi Moore. To give you an idea of how the defenses have been dominating this football game, Ken King of uh, Oklahoma, five carries, 10 yards. He came in with a 6.8 average. Now, Horace Ivory, who came in with a 9.1 average, is minus 10. The Oklahoma defensive front, of course, has contained Texas just about as well. It's Phillips, Murray, Kinlaw, Tabor, Backus up front for the Sooners as Cordaro keeps the ball. And so Texas comes out on the first offensive possession of the second half and apparently decided to let the quarterback keep the ball a little bit more, turn it up a little more, because you know the Sooners, bud, are going to be dogging every step of Earl Campbell. And you better dog every step of him. He's averaged 5.6 yards a carry going into this game, and they've shut him off completely in the first half. Football is on the 25 now, where it's third and five. And Texas breaking up the wishbone a little more than they normally do, trying to get the Oklahoma secondary spread out. Darrow keeps, turns up, nothing there. Bacchus 88 gets him right at the line of scrimmage. So Texas will have to punt. 
Now looking at the flags, I don't see much wind. I don't think there's any wind advantage. The wind is across the field, and as it hits the far stands, it swirls a little bit, but uh, it's not enough to play any great effect. Freddie Nixon, number 11, he is the deep man for Oklahoma on a punt return. He's averaging just under nine yards per try. Bertzleben drills it. He's going to give him a little room as it comes up short and a fair catch is caught. Coming up is Jerry Anderson, number 17, to make a fair catch on it. That was a kind of a punt that you can run because it was a low-line drive. Bertzleben, 39 yards on that kick, and for him, that's sort of poor. That uh, really hurt a little bit. Uh, he's been averaging 48.6 yards going into this game, and uh, I'm sure that Darrell Royal thought that he'd hit it a lot better than that. Now Oklahoma wearing the red. They are the home team in this cut and bowl match at their 36-yard line. First down, Thomas Lott is the quarterback. He fakes it to his fullback team, gives it to Horace Ivory, number 32. He hits in there for three out to the 40. For Oklahoma up front, it is Hicks, Ballschweiler, Evans, Farthing, Roberts, Vaughn back in, Rhodes alternating with Hoover. The quarterback is Lott, Peacock number four, Ivory 32, King 30. Is right on the 40-yard line, defensively up front now for Texas. It's Lee, Stratty, Shear, Burleson, linebackers, Finlaw, Johnson, Hamilton, and Hartinger. And coming down the line, it's Thomas Lott. And Lott, the sophomore out of San Antonio, Texas, is dropped by Lionel Johnson, a senior from Winfield, Louisiana. Looks like Lott's uh, collision with Johnson has resulted in Johnson being shaken up on the play. Lionel is down. Take a look at Johnson. He's a middle linebacker in the Texas 4-3. He reads well, moves to the outside. Lott made a great move to get by the end. Johnson just kind of dogging him here, and as he turns up field, he's on top of him. But you can see the shoulder hit him in the ribs and probably knocked the wind out. 12-32 to go, third quarter. Score in the Cotton Bowl. Texas 3, Oklahoma nothing. has the ball third down a short three yards to go the ball is up near the 44 yard line big play here to keep possession ivory goes in motion thomas lott coming down the line hit as he delivers the ball to kenny king king cannot get him out of the corner for the first down and that is spectacular defensive pursuit by the texas longhorn spinlaw the man there first Almost every snap is like goal line defense because Oklahoma's got an excellent field goal kicker, too. A first down there, and Oklahoma would have been in field goal range. The point here, though, Bud, I think, is that they practice against this offense all the time, so they know all the nuances of it, don't they? Yes, and it's the recognition factor and the timing. Both of them look at it every day in spring practice, and they really know how to handle it. Here's the kick by Hatcher. Got a good one that time. Claiborne backs up to the 10. He's called fair catch. He had a little room. But that's probably because the defense uh, or the people covering have seen him make the fair call and did not follow through on it. 45 yards on the punt and 11.55 to go in the third quarter. Bill Fleming is the man with the scores. Yes, we want to give another update on that Nebraska-Colorado game. Vince Ferragamo of Nebraska has just passed to Curtis Craig, a nine-yard touchdown pass. Al Evelyn has converted, and now Nebraska has regained the lead in that battle in Boulder, 14-12. Of course, we had a big upset in uh, Ole Miss beating Georgia 21 to 17, and Oklahoma State upset Kansas. Texas ball, 10 yard, 11 yard line. They give the ball inside, and there just isn't much there for Earl Campbell because they are really looking for him. He just uh, had enough strength for his uh, balance to pick up about three or four yards on the play, Keith, when he had absolutely, as you said, no room to run. I know that Darrell is thinking that we can't afford to fumble here. When offensive errors cost you points, which is what it does when you fumble in your own territory, which is how Texas got the field goal, they really do kill you when you're on offense downfield. You don't put points on the board, even though you're disappointed. Second down and six yards to go. The ball is given to Campbell, and under a full head of steam, Bert Earl pounds it out to the 20. That'll leave them just about a yard short of their first down. And now Campbell will have 26 yards, so roughly, in the ball game on 12 carries. I'll tell you, this is the toughest part of a, a day for a manager, I guess, Howard, to lose that opening game of a championship series and then be courteous enough and kind enough to come back on the field and do a little post-game stuff. And right now, let's go down to Reggie Jackson as he talks to... Hello, 17, Jerry Anderson, the senior out of Murfreesboro, Tennessee, read the play perfectly, and he really drilled Jones. So Texas is going to have to punt again. In the first half, uh, Texas uh, averaged about eight yards further on every punt exchange than did Oklahoma. However, two kicks thus far this half, uh, 
Oklahoma kicked it 45 yards. Texas only 39. Let's see what Erksleben can do this time. Deep man for Oklahoma is Freddie Nixon as Erksleben stands back inside the five. Hits it at the seven. Got most of that one. Hangs it up there. Nixon wants to take a shot at it. He brings it back to the 45, the 43-yard punt for Russell Erksleben. But here's the story of the kick. He hung the ball five seconds, and the roller coaster continues to roll. No economy is being practiced here today in this part of Texas, I'll tell you. Everybody's spending their emotion inside the Cotton Bowl and spending their walking around money outside. Look at the parking lots are absolutely stuffed. 46-yard line of Oklahoma. Sooners have the ball. Good field position. They trail 3-0. Ten minutes to go. Third quarter. Keith Jackson along with Bud Wilkins. Bill Clinton and Jim Lampley. Thomas Lott hands it up the middle to Jim Colbert. And the fullback found some daylight on the left side. Pops it down to the Texas 48-yard line. Fine block that time by Shays Evans. He just picked off the middle. Nose guard for Texas. And a hook clean. Number nine checking in. That's uh, Lee Hover, wide receiver, not very big, 5'8", 157. But Oklahoma has a history of having little people play those outside positions to utilize the quickness. Lot keeps it hit as he pitches it out to Peacock, and Peacock is just hammered. He may have lost a yard on that play as Steve Collier came up out of the secondary, number 28, and also right there for the Texas Longhorns was number 59, Rick Burleson. When you're coaching defense, Keith, you'd like to hope that your defensive team will sound like a riveting machine as more and more people come in on the tackle, and that's the way it's been with both defenses this afternoon. Somebody makes the original hit, and then there are three or four more men right there. Ball is short of the Texas 49, third down and about five to go for the first down. Thomas Lott, sophomore from San Antonio, the quarterback, going to throw, goes deep with it down the sideline. And missed his man. Going with it was Steve Rhodes all the way, but right there with him for every step was Paul Jett for Texas. Here's Jim. This is Steve Davis, the quarterback who led Oklahoma to the last two national championships. He's standing with me on the sideline right now. Steve, this Oklahoma offense is stagnating. What can they do to get it moving? Well, right now they're going to have to, you know, try to put the ball in the air and loosen up the defense a little bit and get a little bit of something going outside. They've been running the fullback a lot and trying to stay conservative for the foot. To the quarterback, Tom's getting some confidence, but Tom's going to be running out, so they've got to get something going and uh, go outside. Thank you, Steve Davis. Let's go back to Keith. Well, you could see that little bit of a dance back there as uh, Hatcher fielded the snap on the bounce and then jigged around for a while, and he almost had to eat it. 49 yards on the punt, though, as it goes into the end zone. Texas gets it back at their 21st down. to that punt now and you see the ball bounce back I guess he wanted to fool around with a little bit because nobody was rushing to give his coverage time but it almost got dangerous but well, you wish at that point of course you'd have the rush on trying to block the kick he made a very good move there he almost did get it blocked but had uh, Texas had the rush on they certainly would have blocked the kick all right we come back to the 20 yard line and there's the first big one by Earl Campbell as operating out of the wishbone goes it over the right side behind Charles Wilcox Dave started in Billy Gordon, and he takes it from the 20 out to about the 35-yard line. So that's the first real big gainer we've had today. Jim Jones led him in there, which is a different pattern than the wishbone usually has, and he picked off the linebacker, which is what gave Campbell a room to run. And it's the first first down of the second half. At eight and a half minutes to go in the third quarter, just beyond the Texas 35, Horns lead 3-0. Ball is given again to Campbell, and there just isn't very much there this time as Phil Tabor, number 74, and Daryl Hunt, 85, are right there to grab a hold of him. This Monday night, ABC's NFL Monday Night Football features the San Francisco 49ers and the Los Angeles Rams from the Coliseum in Los Angeles. It's a battle for the lead in the NFC's Western Division. That's at 9 Eastern time over most of these ABC stations. ABC's NFL Monday Night Football. Ball is at the 36-yard line. Second down and nine for Texas. Lock it wide left. Podaro out to Suber. And Ivy Suber is hammered as he gets to the sidelines. And I know I've used that word several times this afternoon, but it's a very apt word. There's just no way, Keith, that you're going to run the ball against the way the defenses are playing. Both of them have that recognition we talked about a moment ago where they do understand the timing and the faking on the wishbone. 
the team that puts the ball in the air successfully will begin to move it. But you've got to throw it against these two defenses to make your offense go. On third down and eight now as Dalkey is out and Moore back in at a nine-backing position for Oklahoma. They do not put it up. They keep it inside with Campbell. And there is nothing there for him as he bangs it up to about the 40. And now Texas will have to kick it away with seven minutes to go in the third quarter. New York Yankees defeated the Kansas City Royals 4-1 to today in the American League Playoff Championship Series first game or you see the first down totals now in this game almost matching the baseball score. Tonight at 8 Eastern time over most of these stations it'll be Philadelphia Cincinnati starting the National League Championship Series and here is a towering kick. Freddie Nixon feels it, somehow gets away with it and they've got him down around the 21-yard line. The white shirt arrived at the same time as the ball. I don't know how in the world he ever kept it. I thought he almost interfered with the opportunity to catch the ball, Keith. He was that close. 39 yards, but it is a high hanger. And watch, here comes the tackler, and here comes the ball. That's very close timing. You're supposed to give him a yard. That's what the rules say, but he was moving so fast that maybe they did give him that yard. I think what made it possible is Jimmy Gresham, 45 of Texas, realized he might be a tad early, so he eased up a little bit and didn't really lay the hit on him. See, he did back off just a little. Here we go at the 22-yard line of Oklahoma. Sooners have it. Lott gives it inside. And Kenny King is swarmed by the white shirts as he gets three yards on the carry. And a new formation that time with uh, Peacock moving up to what we call a wingback position to try to get a little more blocking along the line of scrimmage. It took a while to untangle him. Incidentally, 96 is back in the ball game for Texas. Lionel Johnson, we saw him leave. He went back on the sideline, and they got bumped up again, and here he comes. Second down and seven. Peacock. 26. Down he goes. And back there, slamming his hand on the ground, wishing he'd have had a little better luck in his effort. It was Paul Jett, number 11, who had penetrated the blocking of Oklahoma and was in the backfield, but he missed it. That's supposed to change the timing. That was just a straight-up power sweep with no inside faking of any kind. Texas, again, read it perfectly at the pursuit out there to make the tackle. Thomas Lott, number six, a sophomore, 5'11", 196 pounder, he's a runner. Out of this wishbone, you get a guy that size that quick, he is definitely a running back out of the eye formation of all goes to Horace Ivory. And he gets to about the 30-yard line, that's going to lead him short on third down of the first down yardage. And so now Oklahoma is going to have to punt again. That's their first use of the I formation. Last week against Iowa State, the game was tied 10 to 10. Very short time remaining. The play they just ran broke, and Ivory scored a touchdown on it. On fourth and two, the ninth punt of the ball game for Oklahoma. Kick is away by Hatcher, and it's a good one. Backs Claiborne up to the 28. Look out. He gets open. He may go. They get him from behind. Nothing. We'll be right back. Win. Have a look at Raymond Claiborne's effort under that punt, and it was a good one. We've been talking about uh, time bomb kicking away. Somebody's going to break one, and it almost looked as though Claiborne could hear as he picked up the wall of blocks down the sideline, but they forced him back inside, and the Oklahoma pursuit finally gets to him, but Texas has great field position. At the Oklahoma 49-yard line, Cadaro has gone all the way, and Earl Kimbo from the 49 to the 45 for four yards. Richard Murray, a junior out of Greenville, Texas, made the stop. Total yardage in the ball game, Texas 131. The Oklahoma Sooners have been able to get only 54 so far. And they've only made one first down, Keith. That last punt is uh, interesting because we talk about net punt yardage. He kicked the ball very well, but with a run bark, the net yardage game was only 17. Call it the 46, make it second down three, go inside, nothing for Campbell. Earl is hit right at the line of scrimmage. They might give him a yard on the penetration. So Earl now, 17 carries, 52 yards, but the only, in fact, uh, the long gainer on the ground of the afternoon was a 15-yard sprint by Campbell. So far, Texas has been able to hold on to those swift Sooners. They had a rash of turnovers at the sort of tail end of the first half, but uh, here in the first quarter, both teams concentrating well on the ball. Lock it to the left. Super comes with it. Now Texas. 
Beginning to open up a little bit, perhaps. Cadaro going to put it up, comes it over the middle. He throws it right into the hands of Darrell Hunt, number 85. Threw it right into Hunt's hands. Hunt was dropping back. Uh, he read past very well. Clayton got, Cordero rather, got set. Just couldn't see him. Let's take a look at Hunt. You can see him, number 85. Dropping back, he sort of feels that crossing pattern. And as he feels it, he turns. And he gets absolutely right. Cordero hits him right on the number. The momentum of the ball and his own momentum causes him to fall down. Turnovers now, Texas 4, Oklahoma 3. He had Lockett going down the middle, but he was in deep, deep, heavy traffic. So it was a relatively poor decision on the part of Cordaro to deliver the ball in that area. Here we come down with the Oklahoma City for the ball. On the play as Steve Stratty, number 31, gets in there and messes it up and brings the ball carrier down. So there'll be a loss of two on it, making second down and 12 for Oklahoma at their own 23. I know that the obvious uh, reaction of people watching the game is the Oklahoma offense really doesn't have much to it, but uh, they have been among the leading offensive teams in the country the last couple of years. They don't have quite the same personnel, and they're going against a defense that is marvelously well prepared. Second and 12, Thomas Lott ends inside and running, struggling and squirming and trying to squeeze out. Precious real estate is Kenny King. That's a very difficult position to play, I think, out of the wishbone, where you not only have to have leg drive and, and, and quickness, but you must be strong enough to absorb an awful lot of punishment and banging around. Earl Campbell is big enough to take it to Texas. Oklahoma's been alternating their two fullbacks, uh, King and Culbreth. Both of them have been playing very well going into the game. King averaging 6.8 a try and Culbreth 7.4 yards a try. Oklahoma now takes a timeout. That means they have two remaining here in the second half with two minutes and 24 seconds to play in the third quarter. Timeouts can become very precious when you're in this kind of a football game. Texas so far has not used a timeout. Goodyear Blimp America with our old friend Dick Daniel flying over the Cotton Bowl, and let's spend a moment with Bill Clinton. All right, Keith, we're going to try one more time to get a live report from Mike Moran. I think we have all of the bugs on the phone here. Mike, give us a report on the Nebraska-Colorado game as it stands right now. How much time? Okay, Bill, there's about six minutes and 30 seconds left in the game. Nebraska has moved ahead 14 to 12. Colorado had driven down to the three-yard line, had a field goal attempt by Mark Zetterberg blocked. Mark had already kicked four field goals. So the Hunters now have the ball at the Colorado 40 and are driving with 6.30 to go. Nebraska leading 14. Well, it must have been a very, very strong defensive game there today and quite a few surprises. Okay, Mike, we'll be okay, back well. with you. And uh, I'm sure that uh, you'll still have some other things to report. <laughs> okay. All right, let's go back to Keith now. I bring you up to date, too, on the fact that Georgia lost its first today and Kansas lost its first. Uh, Jayhawkers losing to Oklahoma State and Georgia losing to Ole Miss. It is third down. They need eight yards as Thomas Locke goes back to throw. He throws it short. He overthrows Horace Ivory. He had Ivory out in the short zone. Finlaw was over there to defend for Texas, but he did have a shot at it. Lot now one for four in passing for 16 yards, and the Sooners will have to kick it away on fourth and eight. And I think, Keith, one of the reasons for the rash of upsets this year is the effect of the limitation on 30 scholarships per year. It's just evened up the competition tremendously. High snap, great save by Hatcher. Miracle that he was able to save it and get it away. Fair catch is called for Texas. And so the Longhorns, uh, Glenn Blackwood, playing the short position, fielding that 30-yard punt. And Texas will get the ball at the 43-yard line. First down. Look at that. Hatcher had to go up and make a one-handed grab. When you... Uh work with your center on long punt or even on field goal if you, you don't mind too much if they put it on the ground because if you're any kind of a player you can block that kind of a ball but when they throw it over your head you are in deep trouble kevin craig the man who snapped it kevin bounced one and can come high now you better watch out here is godaro back at the ball game gives to campbell plenty flags all over the field as texas goes into uh, its first down play and it's going to go against the horns for illegal procedure somebody moving too soon 210 to go third quarter the opening game of the National League Championship Series tonight at 8 o'clock over most of these ABC stations. The Cincinnati Reds with Don Gullett, the Philadelphia Phillies with Steve Carlton. The Yankees defeated Kansas City earlier today 4-1. 
We have tomorrow at 3.30 Eastern time, we'll have the National League teams in action for you, Cincinnati and Philadelphia. And then at 8 p.m. Eastern time tomorrow night, Kansas City and New York. And here's Cadaro handing the ball inside again. And again, it's Earl Campbell. So they just keep teasing him with Campbell. They keep thinking, Keith, that sooner or later he's going to find some daylight. He's going to go through there clean, and then he's going to run over somebody in the secondary for the long, long game. I tell you, though, that's a tough bunch back in that Oklahoma defensive secondary, that Peters and Hill and Henderson and Anderson. Oh, they're strong, big, they react very well, they're experienced. Three seniors, one junior. It is second down for Texas now, and the ball is back at the 41. It'll be second down and 12. After the penalty, and they give it to Campbell, and he just keeps rotating up across the 45 near the 47. 120 to go in the third quarter. They caught Oklahoma that time with a slant onto the top of the screen, but uh, the adjustment after Campbell got the ball was good enough to hold it well the short yardage. Schubert out of the Texas backfield now, and Jimmy Walker returns. And we still haven't seen Johnny Lamb Jones, the Olympic sprinter. Because of a deep bruise in his back. I think he could play games if they need him. You don't want to risk injury if you don't have to. Ball goes to Johnny Hamdrone. And there's a penalty flag. It may very well be a face mask. And Daryl Hunt grabbed him up around the collar, brought him down. The official right there banged the flag right on the ground. And Hunt went up into orbit, yelling about the call. I've kind of been waiting Keith, for that. Uh, direction play which is what it was you saw the hunt linebacker move to the wrong side of the screen and then come back and he was the only man to prevent the touchdown as ham was ready to set sail and he does get his that hand might be across a good call too bud because watch the arm as he brings it across here that's almost a blow isn't it yeah it really is very very close to it i don't think there's any intent there it's just that he knows he's got to get to him and you want to tackle high when you're the last man. Those legs move a whole lot faster than the upper part of the body, but this is great field position for Texas. 15-yard personal foul penalty moves the ball. The nose of it just about touching the Oklahoma 30-yard line. And Johnny Ham Jones is out of the game. Ivy Super is back in for Texas. So it's Walker and uh, Super and Earl Campbell. flag. Texas breaks the big play, but there's a penalty flag, and it was thrown before Earl Campbell really got going. And there's going to be a penalty against Texas, and legal procedure to wipe it out. That's Campbell has gone all the way to the 13-yard line. I think that's the fourth time, Keith. They've come up to the line of scrimmage, and uh, Cadero has called the snap count without waiting for the one second. It's when they're trying to go very, very quickly to take off Oklahoma stunts and make it hard for him to get set to stunt, and not giving the team time to really get lined up and get set. So they waste a 17-yard pickup in penalties. Texas 5 for 21 yards. Oklahoma 5 for 55 yards. That's the Texas defensive bunch on the sidelines. They've had their conference now. I don't know why they need one. The way they've been playing, but let's talk it up and keep it going is what they're saying. On the 35-yard line of Oklahoma, first down and 15, inside 30 seconds to go in the third period. Johnny Ham Jones back in the Texas backfield, runs it over the right side to about the 31 to 4. So it'll bring up a second down and 11. Five-yard five penalties don't sound like much, but in a game like this where the defenses are dominating, you start first and 15, and it's a day and night difference between starting first and 10. We understand that number 85 was asked to leave the playing area. Oklahoma 31. Johnny Ham Jones has the ball. And he gets to about the 28-yard line before Jerry Anderson comes from the backside and gets him. There's Hunt, who has been ejected apparently from the ball game because of that little altercation he had there on the sidelines and the tackle I can't. on Johnny Ham Jones. I don't really think that the particular play itself was the reason for the ejection. Perhaps it might have been something that occurred conversationally. 
I would think so, Chief, even though you could see him talking to the assistant coach and waving his arm and saying that really shouldn't have been enough to throw me out. He might have said something, though, and of course, if he did, then that's why the penalty was called, and it's a severe one. Third down and seven yards to go. That is Earl Kimball inside the 25 to about the 24. That will bring up a fourth down and will bring into the ball game number 15 for Texas, Russell Ertzleben, who has accounted for the only points in this football game so far, a 37-yard field goal to give Texas a 3 to nothing lead. And now he's going to go for one from about the 40-yard line as you see the third quarter numbers. And the Texas defense playing an absolutely magnificent game. Oklahoma, 56 total yards on offense thus far. Out of Thompson hole from the 31. It is a 41-yard shot. Looks good to me. It is good. The Texas Longhorns build their lead to 6 to nothing. But remember, one, one bolt of lightning can wipe out a six-point lead. 13 minutes and 43 seconds to play in the football game. And Oklahoma's backs all have the ability to break the big play any time for the touchdown. Going into the game, all of them were averaging better than five yards per carry, and you don't build up that kind of average unless you break some big plays. The deep men for Oklahoma, as the Texas fans result, they're sitting on the sunshine side of the field. As the visiting ball club, number 24 is uh, Steve Rhodes, a freshman out of Dallas, and Freddie Nixon, number 11, a freshman out of Miami, Florida. Hurts later now to kick it off. Gets it up high, and it'll go into the end zone. Two yards deep, and it rolls. Oh, he almost had a little room on that sideline as he went to the wall, but he was hit and slowed up by Gresham. And uh, it'll be Oklahoma ball at the 19-yard line. The statistics uh, showing the dominance at the end of three quarters of play by the University of Texas. They've held the ball about six minutes longer, even though they've had one more turnover. Their defense has been so absolutely dominant. Oklahoma, 56 total yards. I will see if the Sooners have any tricks with them. I would think we're going to see them pretty quick. At the 19-yard line, Thomas Lott rolls left. Missed by one man, Hartinger, and he rolls it up to about the 25 for five yards before Finlaw and Johnson bring him down. Let's take a look at Johnson here. He's played a great game at the middle linebacker for the University of Texas. This is a bootleg play by Lott. Johnson took the fake, went way to the wrong side. Lott had an option to pass run up. He had to run with the ball. His receivers recovered, and Johnson comes across to make the tackle. As he rolled to that side, though, but there wasn't a single man in a pattern for him to look at. On second down and five, inside it goes. Kenny King, not much. Maybe two. Coming in there, third and two, Chief, and if they make it, it will be the second first down that Oklahoma has made in this entire game. King, nine for 19. Two and a half for the first down. Colbert is in and King is out. And they better... one of our old chums, Dorrance Smith, who is here with us now. He's on our staff here at ABC for a good many years. He's now working out of the White House. And Oklahoma takes a timeout, and I think it's very wise because they were about to get penalized for a delay of the game. So the Oklahoma Sooners, trailing in the ball game six to nothing, have only one timeout remaining. 12-24 to go at the game. Today. All right, I'll say it once more that Oklahoma trailing in the ball game six to nothing with only 12.24 to go, only one timeout remaining. They've got a third down at about two and a half yards to go for a first down from just outside the 27. Peacock in motion. They give that football away. Fumbled. And Horace Ivory unable to get a thing out of it. There's a loss back to the 24 yard line as Hamilton, number 13, came pulling his way in there. Now Oklahoma will have to punt again. And they've had two bad snaps from center, Keith. I doubt very much if Darrell's going to not rush all of the time from now on. Those two linebackers are right there for Texas, the 11th punt of the ball game for Oklahoma. Raymond Claiborne. Nope. It is Jet. Paul Jet making the catch. Fair catch. So the Texas Longhorns are now going to get it. 39-yard line after a 37-yard punt. The exports to the Big 8 Conference. 
on the athletic field, well documented. But what is not so well documented, perhaps the contributions made by other Big Eight graduates in all phases of society, personalities like Robert Redford, Johnny Carson, George C. Scott, Wizard White, and many other man who invented the computer, John V. Atnasov, all graduated from Big Eight University. Texas with the ball. And it is Earl Kimball slanting against the grain, trying to catch Oklahoma, slanting a particular way and go against it. And he almost got away with it that particular time. Six to six yards total now for Earl. It's about the closest he's come, Keith, except uh, a few moments ago when he popped that one on first down and Texas got the penalty for illegal procedure. Texas breaks the backfield again. Four yards, second down, five from the 44 of Texas. Here comes Johnny Ham Jones. And he's out very close to midfield and very close to a first down. Terry Peters, number 16, pushed him out for Oklahoma. 14 carries, 41 yards now for Johnny Jones. And the misdirection plays are about the only thing that either side can make go. If you go with the regular flow, the defense is flowing right with them and snapping them off right out the line of scrimmage. Chains brought across the field for the measurement as they look for the first down for Texas, and it looks like it's just a bit short. 11 minutes and 15 seconds to go in the game, and Texas leading six to nothing. And this remains some kind of a defensive battle. Oklahoma has made one timeout. Texas, pardon me, one first down, and Texas has made only five first downs, but they're a yard away from making their six. The Ferris wheel is spinning in the bright sunshine on this autumn day in Dallas at the Texas State Fairgrounds. And so far, the Oklahoma Sooners uh, have been spinning their wheels against the Texas defense. Third down and a short yard into the middle it goes, and the first down is made by Earl Kimball as he penetrates midfield and takes it down to about the Oklahoma 49-yard line. Now you've got 11 05 If you're a real football fan, I'll tell you, you go right from the Cotton Bowl out on over the road here some 30 miles to Fort Worth and watch Rice and TCU play tonight, and you have a chance to look at Tommy Kramer, the top passer in the country, and I imagine a lot of folks are going to do that. And Darrell Royal's record, uh, really a magnificent coaching job at the University of Texas. He's in his 20th year. Staying inside, staying conservative, and why not when you've got a horse like Earl Campbell and you've got a 6 nothing lead and only 10 minutes and 45 seconds to play in a game against a club like Oklahoma. The longer you can sit on that ball, the better off you're going to be because it won't be long now before time will become the ally of Texas. at the Oklahoma 47-yard line, where it is second down and eight. Going into the shadows, Earl Campbell gets inside the 45 to the 44. So he's going to bring up a third down, and it'll be just about five yards. I'll tell you, Keith, come on. Murray and Tabor are playing magnificently in those three middle positions on defense for the University of Oklahoma. That time, the linebackers were deep. Oklahoma secondary was playing pass all the way. They gave it to Campbell, and those three men just snuffed him off. You see, the first down total in this half indicates, I think, the dominance of the defense. Well, Texas leads 6-0. They have not exactly been running up and down the field. One first down here, though. Uh, Hurtley then may be in field goal range. Third and five. It is Johnny Jones caught behind the line of scrimmage. It's Terry Peters, number 16, who makes another big defensive play for Oklahoma. That shows you clearly how the defense is playing. Terry Peters is supposed to be a corner man, and he's up on the line of scrimmage playing like a defensive end. He came across as an end would and just absolutely smothered the play. That pretty well washes away any field goal opportunity since the ball is marked all the way back at the Texas 49. Erksleben is in to kick, and Nixon will go deep. Along with Jerry Anderson for Oklahoma, there's Nixon, number 11. Erksleben is number 15 as we look from the end zone. Almost no pressure at all. He hits it across the field, and it'll go into the end zone. Boy, he's got some kind of a leg on him. He just knocked that thing out of sight. 51 yards on the punt. 26 to go in the game. Texas leading 6-0. Sooners will get the ball at the 20. And Darrell Royal's 
Texas Longhorn defense continue to contain the Oklahoma Sooners. Hokies ball, first down, 20-yard line. Here's a reverse. Rhodes back to throw a forward pass. Lobs it up. It's up for grabs, and nobody can get it. Steve Collier was back there covering on the play, and he had, well, actually, Reggie Mathis was wearing Collier. He was all over it. A beautiful defensive coverage that time. That's the play that Oklahoma scored on to beat Michigan in the Orange Bowl, except they ran it, and they expected the pass run option would go. Still, what happened in that uh, Colorado-Nebraska game? All right, it is final now. Nebraska has defeated Colorado 24-12 to in that game in Boulder, so it is a final. Keith? Thank you. We'll have all the scores for you on the Prudential scoreboard following the ball game. It is second down and 10 as Thomas Lott turns it upfield. He's to the 25-26 yard line before Hamilton brings him down. And tonight at 8, Eastern time over most of these ABC stations, the big hammer throwers out of that National Baseball League get at it for the championship series in Philadelphia. The Cincinnati Reds and the Philadelphia Philadelphia Phillies, Don Gullick and Steve Carlton having at it. A couple of premier left-handers, and you'll see it tonight right here on ABC, starting at 8 Eastern time. Earlier today, the Yankees defeated the Kansas City Royals 4-1. It is third down, four and a half yards, lot rolling to the right, out there in a one-on-one, -on -one, throws a short little pass to Hicks. game that has been made for scrimmage by Oklahoma. 22 yards on the play. Just a simple bootleg pass. He was wide open as the linebackers were going the wrong way. Here it is again. Had a lot of daylight. Hit from behind. All at the 47-yard line. They get first down sooner. Lot keeps it. He's right at midfield. For about two and a half, Johnson Hamilton combined for the tackle. And eight minutes and 15 seconds to play in a ball game. It is a 6-0 Texas lead. Lots carries the ball today 14 times. But as soon as he's picked up 22 yards. And you keep wondering, will Oklahoma break one? They kind of an offense that is explosive. Each one of their backs has the ability to go for a touchdown, given any daylight. But our Texas defense has been so swarming that there just hasn't been room for anybody to run. The referee now asking for the bands to quiet down just a little so the Oklahoma players can be heard in the huddle. We'll have the offensive and defensive players of the game for you, but that's going to take a council of war to determine. Because there isn't much to choose right now. 7.40 to go in a ball game. Second down. Seven and a half for the first down from midfield. It's Peacock. And he's caught at the Texas 48 by Ernest Lee and Bill Hamilton. And he got Paul Jett really feeling badly. He said, I should have had him for a loss. Peacock's some kind of skilled runner, and he did get past Jett. Big, big third down. They've got to go to the Texas 43 to get the first down. The ball is at the 48. So in simple language, it's five yards. Plus the length of the ball. They take it up the middle. And there's nothing there for Kenny King. He gets one yard, but he is well short of the first down. So perhaps... Oklahoma hoping that Texas would be reading wide on that play. They found Texas was not. King now 20 yards, 10 carries. And it's punting time. And if you're a Texas fan, you hope it is not fumble time. Raymond Claiborne and Steve Collier going deep for Texas. That's Mickey Hatcher's in the punt. This is what, number 13, I believe, or number 12. For Hatcher, hangs it up, and it kicks straight sideways and goes out of bounds. And it's up on the Texas 24-yard line, where the Longhorns will have it after a 24-yard punt. First down, leading 6-0. Mike Godaro handing the football off to Johnny Ham Jones, 5'9", 180 pounder. As he goes to the 24 to the 26 yard line, maybe the 27 for three. Bill Fleming will have college football 76 tomorrow. And every Sunday afternoon, check your local listings for the time in your neighborhood. 
But he's got some outstanding highlights for you tomorrow. You'll see some highlights from Georgia Ole Miss, Nebraska, Colorado, Ohio State, Iowa, and many other features on College Football 76. Second down and seven yards to go. Campbell! And he's at the 36-yard line. First down. Texas and Dolphin and Hill bring him down for Oklahoma. First time, really, that we've had anything hot clean at the line of scrimmage. Uh, Campbell did it a few moments ago, but we had a penalty on the play. They did a good job of blocking. James picking off Tabor to open it up a little bit outside for Campbell. He now Earl, 25 carries, 81 yards. And it's first down. Longhorns at the 36. 5.30 to go in a ball game. Oklahoma has won the last five times here in the Cotton Bowl. Bumbo! Oklahoma's got it! Zach Henderson covers the football. It was a matter of hard hitting at the line of scrimmage. The ball comes loose to Johnny Jones, and here's Oklahoma with a golden opportunity. And that's the fifth turnover for Texas this afternoon. Offensively, this is the time after you get that sort of a break and you're six points behind. Look at me like he just dropped the ball. He he gone did. before he got hit. A little bit of a delayed reverse action. He didn't ever get the handle. 37 yard line of Texas. First down, Oklahoma. Thomas Lott coming. He's at the 30. He's at the 29 before Raymond Claiborne brings him down. He bobbled the ball on the snap and that broke down the timing of the Texas back defensive team. the 29-yard line, Oklahoma, their first real threat of this ball game. We're still waiting to have our counsel here on who will be the offensive and defensive players of the team. Each man receiving a, the university receiving a $1,000 scholarship from Chevrolet in the name of the player chosen. And the man injured here and time taken for him is number 13, Bill Hamilton, the senior linebacker from Las Cruces, New Mexico. He'll have to lead the ball game. And Lance Taylor, a freshman out of El Paso, will come in to replace him. It's kind of a baptism of fire, Keith, at this point in the game where Oklahoma scores a touchdown, gets the extra point, they win. In plays in the ball game, Texas has run 56 rushing plays. Oklahoma only 39. It is second down and eight at the 29. Ball goes to Kenny King, and King gets his longest game of the day as he takes it to the 24-yard line for a first down. And Horace Ivory moved up out of the wishbone formation to a wingback slot, and his block opened it up for King. Hamilton comes right back. He's still hobbling, but Taylor comes out, and they ran right at Taylor on that play. First down, Oklahoma. Texas 24. Lot keeps it. Caught. Got a yard. Number 49, Hartinger, and 96, Johnson. Right there, but Johnson's a horse. Real pressure on the open Texas defense here. Over comes in at a wide receiver position, bringing a play to Thomas Watt. As time now, four minutes, 15 seconds remaining in the game. At the 22 of Texas, call it second and eight. It's Ivory, and he almost broke it. all afternoon here in the dying moments of the fourth quarter they get a great break with the fumble and it looks as though they're moving it now against this South Texas defense. Oh, the ball is subject to 15 yard line it's third down and one for Oklahoma. Pressure now on the Texas defense which has been so great all day. Into the middle. It'll be a first down as King wrestles for it and gets it at the Texas 13 yard line. Can really feel the pressure mounting now. Six point lead for Texas. Oklahoma held to the first down, one first down through three quarters, and they just picked up two in a row after recovering the fumble. And six, six, six. First down to Texas 13 yard line. Lock keeps it, goes in the middle with it. He's at the 10 yard line, just inside the 10. And you 
We've got three minutes and 12 seconds to play in the ball game. And a little different wrinkle off the wishbone. That time, he faked to his fullback, let the fullback go to the outside, and he came back inside of the man that he faked to. Texas defense overran the play. Lot now, 17 carries, 34 yards. Time call for Oklahoma. Lot was apparently shaken up on the play with 2.59 to go in the ball game. Oklahoma, no more timeouts remaining. Texas leading 6-0. Fumble the football, and Oklahoma now trying to shove it in the end zone and get the lead. Texas leading with only 2.59 to go in the ball game. by score of 6 nothing. Second down and seven from the 10. And it's Ivory, and he's at the five. A yard short of the first down. Yeah, he made some kind of run. It didn't really look like he had any daylight at all, but he just sent it his way through there and picked up a very nice gain and Oklahoma is definitely on the move. Here it is again. You can see it's a little cutback play and he runs right by the linebacker coming in. That was sure that missed him, but he was moving the wrong way and he had not enough balance to get back. I mean, the man that won this game for Oklahoma a year ago. He's at the one yard line and it's first down and goal to go. Oklahoma at the Texas one. And a little misdirection play. Texas defense keeps overrunning it. Now it's 23 to go in the ball game. And Oklahoma trying to exercise opportunity after the Texas fumble. And take it in. Fumble happened. Oklahoma recovered at the 37-yard line of Texas. They're trying to punch it in. First down and goal from the one-yard line. to the stack and they hold him and there's just a whole bunch of white shirts there i saw 28 collier come over the top and meet him eyeball to eyeball so there was very little advance yeah, we've got the play got the clock going deep as well as the game there's only a minute and 50 seconds remaining great texas defensive charge that time but he picked up a little bit of yardage see if ivory gets it again yep
Oklahoma missing the extra point with 1.33 to go. And most importantly now, remember, Texas, three timeouts remaining. Oklahoma, none. Mr. Rexon has been the only play that has had much effect on this Oklahoma defense thus far this afternoon. And I expect Texas will give us some of that and perhaps a play action pass here in an effort to move the ball for the necessary 25 yards to set up the field goal. Braylon Wyatt shaking up on that return. Being helped off the field. Here's Jim. It'll win and if this game comes down to Russell Erslaven's foot. He's an interesting guy to keep in mind. He wanted to play quarterback or tight end, something at Texas. He had been a quarterback in high school at Seguin, but the coaches saw him kick and said, no way, he's going to kick all the way through his career. Keith? On first down, they give the ball to Kimball, and the big guy from Tyler goes from the 35 to the 40 for five yards, roughly. And the clock running at 120, and Texas trying to hurry. Well, it's second down and a short six. Badaro to throw. Trouble. Throw. Jones. Off the shoulder pad. Johnny. Trying to run before the ball got there. I'll tell you, that could have been an interception, and that would change it very, very rapidly. Beautiful defensive coverage that time by Oklahoma. Draw fake, and the number one receiver covered. Cordero had the poise to go to his drop-off man, and Oklahoma was right there and almost could have made the interception. All right, it's a minute and seven seconds to play in a football game now. Third down. And six. And not much yardage there as Kemble tries to find some daylight over the left side behind Ingram and James, and there just isn't much there. Now we've got 55 seconds to play in the football game. It is fourth down, and the Longhorns obviously are going to have to kick. We let the clock run. There's 45 seconds to play in a ball game, and this one may wind up all even. All of the noise and the turmoil, charges and countercharges, arguments. Here's a high snap. Oklahoma trying to block it. Texas kicker goes down. Penalty flag down. Oklahoma's going to get nailed to roughing the kicker. Well, Keith said it. That roughing the kicker penalty in 15 yards, and you're getting awfully close to Herc Slavin's range. Habert, where the two men coming, trying to block it, and here it is. You see, they just run right smack into Erkleben. They were very close to making the block, but if you don't touch the ball and you hit the kicker, it's an automatic penalty. So that'll be the sixth penalty and 70 total yards against Oklahoma. Texas, five penalties and 21 yards, and only 27 seconds remaining in the football game. The advance of the football to the Oklahoma 45-yard line. We'll get a field goal attempt, Keith. I'm sure of that, but they'd like to pick up 10 or 12 yards to make it a little bit easier. Those two timeouts remaining are a luxury for Texas right now. If they had to go for the field goal here, it would be a 62-yarder. He tried one earlier and missed it. He was short with it. But one play, one gainer, if they can get 10 yards, then he's very much in his range. I think Billy Gordon went up to the referee to tell him he want to take a timeout right after the play here. 20 seconds. 20. Play in the game. Now the back judge has come up to talk to the referee. Apparently some concern over the clock. I think they lost a couple of seconds. Didn't they? Yeah, they they about seven seconds. They, they really did. I don't know uh, how the clock could have gotten started there, but uh, he's coming over to the sideline to talk about it, see what happened. had taken a timeout. They confer here with the clock operator. So maybe time is so precious here that they will take plenty of time to determine exactly. And now there's Daryl. He's obviously very concerned about the seconds that uh, dribbled away. Well, the problem, these clocks don't go backwards, Keith, and you have to run it all the way through to get it back to where it was. So it's just anybody's guess. It was 27 seconds. Texas had called the time. You're in the huddle. You can see it's run down to 20 now, and I'm positive it was 27 seconds and when I can... they had gone to the huddle. I don't know whether they told the clock man to count seven before you start the clock or not. Have to wait and see. Well, there's something else to argue about the aftermath of a great football game, huh? Being explained now to the crowd. It was definitely a mistake. 
tip the ball for him. There you go. You hear the coach. He's arguing about that seven seconds. And in this particular instance, it can mean so much. The football is just inside the 45-yard line. It is first down for Texas. And they're going to try to reconcile this deficit of seven seconds somehow. We'll have all the scores from around the country on the Prudential School Board right after the game. Remember tonight, the National Championship Series, Philadelphia-Cincinnati at 8 o'clock. Here's Scudero back to pass. He's got time. He has nobody to throw to, though, and they're going to get it. Oh, what a great play by Reggie Kinlaw. Number 62. Now you've got 15 seconds. Well, they used up five seconds there. And they also keep the, lost uh, about 10 yards on the play, nine to be exact, so they're out of field goal range again. They've got time for one more snap and then the field goal, so they've got to come up with something big this time. Well, the question is, folks, Cordero back to throw. He gets it off. He's going for the home run. And it's incomplete. Almost picked off. Jerry Anderson was the man who had the best chance to catch it. They used eight to six seconds. You have nine remaining. He needs a short pattern to set Erksleben up for a potential field goal. I was looking for some kind of a curl or something short that would be a 15 to 18 yard. Lockett's wide left. Figure they go to the tight side of the field, but he's looking wide side. He goes there and he misses him. Throws underneath. Lockett. Zach Henderson's right there, and now you have five seconds remaining in the ball game. And what do you do now? <laughs> Actually, Lockett had run a pretty good pattern, and he was, in a sense, in between the seams. He, he was, if Padaro could have delivered the ball to him. And it appears they're going to go ahead and take the field goal try. This Kirk is Slavin is putting on his field goal shoe. But no, he's not. I guess he took it off again, and he's back in punt formation. He just almost... No you. credibility in a 70-yard field goal try here. And Oklahoma is not taking any credibility about him going to punt it either. <laughs> well, he does hit it. Ball goes into the end zone. The clock runs out. The football game is over. The final score in the 71st meeting between Texas and Oklahoma. Texas 6 and Oklahoma 6. And it's a good one. Switzer and Daryl Royal watch their two teams have at it. A lot of mistakes in the ball game, some opportunities, but more mistakes than opportunities, really. Well, dominant by the defense, Keith, and both teams superbly prepared against the respective wishbone attacks. However, when Oklahoma got the break in the fourth quarter, they did have the ability to mount the drive after having made only two first downs up to that time in the entire football game. It becomes almost quiet for a moment here in the Cotton Bowl as you see the final score, a 6-6 tie. <laughs> well, our offensive player of the ball game will be Russell Erksleben, punted for a 48-yard average and kicked two field goals and was just barely denied the opportunity to win it for Texas. Our defensive player, great nose guard for Oklahoma, Reggie Kinlaw. He was really outstanding. And so we wind up all even here in the 71st game between Texas and Oklahoma. Jerry Klein, our research and spotter. Jimmy Ritz, our statistician. Keith Jackson, Bud Wilkinson, Bill Fleming, and Jim Lampley. The blimp provided by the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company. And travel arrangements made through. Promotional fee paid by... United Airlines, fly the friendly skies of United where you're the boss. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as the leader in sports television, the final score, Texas 6, Oklahoma 6. Nancy Walker. Judge for yourself whether there was any good defensive play in this ball game. There's a fine line right there. In the first part, three fumbles on each side. Three fumbles for Oklahoma, three fumbles for Texas, and there were more fumbles than that that weren't lost. Finally, Russell Erksleben got a 37-yard field goal, and that made the score at that point 3-0 at the half. They came back. 
just a little bit into the fourth quarter, and he picked up another field goal that made it 6-0, but then another fumble by Ham Jones, and that got uh, Oklahoma moving. They moved it down to the one, and Horace Ivey carried it in for uh, the touchdown that made it 6-6. And uh, now we see some of the action of this ball game. This is all in the uh, first half and first quarter play. You'll see a number of fumbles here, a couple right there by uh, Ham Jones. There was his second. He got back-to-back -back fumbles. As we said, there were three apiece on both sides for these two teams, and it was just amazing. It was now Texas' turn to pick something off. Uh, a football game that was supposed to be probably a traditional great, and maybe people just get up a little bit too high for it, because that's what it appeared today. Horace Ivey, a good football player, right there fumbling. Here's Eric Slavin's first field goal. That's a 37-yarder, and it made the score, as I said, at the half, 3 to nothing. Now, they come back again. This is just into the fourth quarter. Eric Slavin again connects on a field goal. Exciting football to that point. It was 6 to nothing. Another fumble, again, by Ham Jones, and this is the touchdown by Horace Ivey. He takes it in at 6-6. Six, six. Now, folks, if this isn't poetic justice, I don't know what it is. The snap is over the head of the Oklahoma holder. He goes back. He tries to throw a pass, but it's no good. Texas then had the ball. They could have kicked the field goal, but they lost yards trying to run it again. So the game ends at a 6-6 six, six time. And when it was all over, Darrell Royal, as if he was trying to forget all about it and change the subject, said that he would quit coaching if the Oklahoma staff would take and pass a lie detector test proving that they had not spied on Texas practice. One OU assistant said that he would if the pot promised by Royal were raised to $300,000 which Royal responded to by saying that's what the OU coach would want for leaving coaching because of he The damage wrought by cyclones in just a few days will take years to repair. Henrietta Winterstein...